Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Well, you know that I'm the guy. I'm out here living life. I'm busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Moves and catching flights. So please don't waste my time. I'm busy. Stay busy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sather, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture. Extremely happy to be back. Of course, you know, it's the boy, Vegan Chorizo Poppy, founder of B&B, only man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks and not tell a lie, Chine Du, Armand Sadler. I am so thrilled to be back. You know, last week, shout out to my guy, Kerry Nixon, for stepping in uh, for us because our lovely uh, one-third of the trio was out BET, BET Award, and then she was out Essence Festin'. But she's back with us, box braids and all. Yeah, you see doing me. Doing her thing, Miss Bad and Busy. How you feeling, Miss 2Bs? I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be back. Shout outs to Carrie for holding it down for the set. You know, mm. my Aquarius twin <laughs> did a good job. So mm. thank you for representing, especially during that Meg part. <laughs> you did that. <laughs> but um, yes, I'm happy to be back with the gang. Did y'all miss me? We did. We did. Yeah, we did. We, we did. did. We, we did. did. Absolutely. It's always good to have a, a woman's voice in the room and... You know, we're going to give you an opportunity to give some thoughts on things that you missed because I'm mm-hmm. sure you have some some thoughts. But, um, of course, the other one-third of the trio, Will, is here. How are you feeling, Will? What's good? What's good? I'm feeling real good. Happy to have Miss Miss 2 bs back, man. Of For course. Real. You know, shout to bring Carrie. the spice? Shout out to Carrie, but, you know, yeah, man. Who else going to bring the spice? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, of course, listeners, make sure y'all subscribe to the YouTube channel for all visual episodes or your favorite audio platform um you can also check out our youtube shorts uh like share comment tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend and their auntie and their cousin and even their ex like put, put your ex on to the show too all right maybe y'all could reconnect over our music tapes so. yeah. no thanks okay <laughs> as far as the um patreon only fan podcast only fans rather uh, patreon.com backslash stay busy pod to get all unfiltered raw unhinged content we got more coming for y'all so don't you worry about that but let's jump into this rapid fire whether you like so whether you like outdoor dining or indoor dining pictures with celebrities or autograph signings the south or the west long naps or a quick rest so if y'all going out to eat y'all trying to eat outdoors or indoors outdoor dining for me okay yeah i'm an indoor person Mm -hmm. i'm an indoor person I feel that, yeah. Bugs, I, I, don't, I don't fuck with the bugs, so mm-hmm. I always take indoor. Like it's 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 aesthetically, it's nice. That's what I like. The sun on you, you in under one little, one little patios mm-hmm. and stuff. Like outdoor dining is cool in theory, but as soon as a bug flies in my food, I'm off it. So, <laughs> but put me indoors now. Uh, you want to take a picture with a celebrity, or are you trying to get an autograph signed from a celebrity? Sign my picture. Okay. Sign the picture. Okay, so you so you combined it. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like yeah. That. Yeah, in a perfect world, I would do that too. Um, but I guess, yeah, I want an autograph. Okay, low key. Like yeah, I want an autograph. I feel like people don't cherish autographs they enough don't. these days because, like, we have the phone. Like, it's so yeah, easy I'm to take a picture. Grab that selfie and post it. Real quick, so, I, I feel that. I feel that. Now, this might be controversial. We might get some anger from this. The South or the West Coast? Which which region did you prefer? Uh... <laughs> The South. The South. Mm, me too. Yeah, the South. Me too. I've also spent more time in the South, so it's hard to really answer it. Like, I do love... The one time I went to L.A., I loved it. But I've, I've been Atlanta and New Orleans. I went to Texas for the first time this year. I've had fun there, so... The South. Nah, I'm real New York. Like, <laughs> like so New York, I'm not even ever leaving New York. Mm-hmm. So, I just say the South just because I just like the music better ever mm-hmm. since, like, the early 2000s to now. Mm-hmm. I do like West Coast music, but yeah. it just... All kinds of sound the same to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Southern hospitality is real. That's one thing I've learned that part. in my trips to the South. People are so nice. Like, you walk into a party in New York, and unless, like, niggas know you, they'll just walk by you and say nothing. If you go to a function in the South, mm-hmm. niggas who don't know you will come up to introduce you. Like, yo, I've never seen you before. What's your name, man? Mm-hmm. Like, all that shit. I'm like, yo, this Southern hospitality shit is really real. Like, they that's know how crazy. to cook. Mm-hmm. They do. T- Absolutely. The food. That too. I-, I don't think it's even. A- I-, I know I haven't explored <laughs> all of L.A. and California yet, but it's not Atlanta, New Orleans, Texas food. Yeah, busting. Undefeated. It's not close. Undefeated. Yeah. <laughs> Lastly, long naps 
or a quick rest? Me and sleep go together real bad. <laughs> long naps. <laughs> yeah, I'm a long nap person too. Facts. Uh, yeah, why? Like, yeah. I feel like a little teaser nap. You'd be waking up tired still. still you you want to exactly. go back to sleep. Yeah. Like, you yeah. might as well just sleep for real. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't nap too often, but when I do, I'm just be long. <laughs> I'm just be you don't long. look like you nap. I don't. I don't. You just be up. Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> My sleep schedule is really fucked. I'm really trying to fix it. So I could be. Are you a night owl? I am. I am. I'm trying to fix my sleep schedule so I can become a morning gym guy. Facts. So I can get slim for 30, take a shirtless pick on the beach when I turn 30. <laughs> so I'm trying to work on that so I get in the gym in the morning. But I, I be I just be up. What time do you usually go to bed? Like two. That's bad. It is bad. Because I wake bad. up at like six for work. It's yeah, not, that's it's tough, not good. Bro. It's not, it's not good. It's not good. That's, and I don't drink that's... coffee either. So it's like I'll be at work just groggy as fuck i still get my shit done like I, I can operate at a really high level off little sleep but i know it's not sustainable especially the older i get mm-hmm. so i'm trying to get to bed earlier like actively like even if it's 10 like yo just turn my lights off yeah get in bed get started even if i'm like 10. scrolling through my phone or watching nah, something cool that. but like by like 12 i'm trying to shut everything down and go to sleep it's been a struggle, but I'll get you. I'm going to teach you. I'll be in bed by 10 30, okay, 11 wow. o'clock. Please help me. I wake help up to out. angry texts all the time. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> you fucking liar. <laughs> it's also because like, I, th- I feel like niggas be having that FOMO where they're like, yo, if I go to bed too early, I might miss something. There ain't really shit to miss. Ain't nothing like, to miss. That, like but nothing that if you're not there for it at 10 30 p.m., it'll be like dire if you Facts. miss it in real time. Facts. Like no- nothing happens at that time. Facts. Especially during the week, maybe on a Friday night. Like, yeah, you might no, miss. No, uh, during the week, mm-hmm. that's industry week. Yeah. So I ain't gonna lie, the motion be motioning during the week. On it the does. weekends, though, it when does. all the tourists is out mm-hmm. and everybody off of work, you mm-hmm. can catch me in the crib sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I'll I, I'll keep y'all updated on my progress in fixing my sleep schedule, um, and I'll let y'all know. I'll, I'll keep a counter of how much I nap throughout the year too. But I promise you, I can probably count it on like my ten fingers. Like, Damn. I do not be napping, but. Uh, let's jump into this chat. So as we said, Miss Two Bs was away from us for two weeks. My heart was broken, but I was happy to see her thriving mm. outside. But we covered a lot. We covered, of course, the Not Like Us video, yeah. the Megan Thee Stallion album, uh, BT Awards happened. So is there anything that you did not get to speak on on the pod that you would like to share your perspective about? Um, I was at the BT Awards. Mm-hmm. I worked on the production side of the award show. For the editorial team and um i really enjoyed this award show mm. i felt like you know it represented the culture where it's at it had like a good representation of like the entire black diaspora especially during tyler's performance when skilly bang came out with her um you know i was one of those people who was not a fan of the usher tribute mm, it was not good he claimed he liked it <laughs> <laughs> um I wasn't convinced. Me neither. Oh, God. But he's such a class act, and he's so graceful, and he comes yeah. from that, you know, school of media training. So he's going to say what he's supposed to say. Mm-hmm, um, exactly. Chloe ate that up, though. I ain't Chloe, gonna lie. Did Chloe well. did good. She did well. She did good. But I just really didn't understand, like, what any of those people had to do with Usher. Yeah. Like, I know why they chose Kiki Palmer, and I still don't understand why they chose Kiki Palmer. Mm-hmm. Um, it, Gambino. Yeah, after he done cleared the stage, <laughs> that shit was so funny. Cause we were all in the crowd, like, wait, is he serious? <laughs> and he he was so dead ass serious. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. It was too progressive for me. Mm. I'm sorry. I, I I feel like I spoke on feminism before on the pod before, and I just it was just way too progressive for me. Um, shout out to Childish Gambino for getting his shit off, and it was so awkward when they announced best new artist. Mm-hmm. And everyone was in the crowd like, get it sexy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it went to Tyler. Mm-hmm. I was just like. Ugh. Yeah, I bet that was weird. I was, <laughs> awkward. Yeah. I, yeah, it was It was so <laughs> awkward. Like, Jesus. we just thought she had it. Yeah, yeah. But it, I wasn't mad at Tyler. But, you no, know, that's I'm, a good pick. No, that's a good pick, too. Pick. It's just, yeah. Sure, it was a good album. Yeah, but it's been so much that has happened, y'all. Like. I'm still I'm I'm thinking about what just happened on Saturday with Trump mm. while I was out and didn't even peep until the end of the day when I went home. So we yeah, get there. <laughs> it's not much for me to catch up on. I'm, y'all held it down. Yeah, so. yeah. No, and uh, we didn't get to speak too much on the Usher tribute, but I I remember the conversation becoming um, that the fact that it was primarily women who did it, aside from childish. It was Gambino. only oh yeah, I forgot. He and <laughs> people were like, 
it was intentional because Usher has always, you know, catered his career to the women. I'm like, that makes sense. That's cool. But I still feel like it is indicative of a lack of male R and B talent right now. Like there's there's no one in the mainstream that I could have picked to do it. Mm-hmm. Or there's no one even beneath mainstream. Like I'm trying to remember what the parts I like, because again, it's been like two weeks since mm-hmm. then. But um Chloe, like you said, was really good. Tiana and Victoria Monet. They did good. Their too. their dance number was good. Tanache, I didn't think she needed to be there. Um, yeah. Yeah, at the end. I wasn't mad at that. I it thought was, Ludacris was going to come out with I her. I did too. I did too. Because Lyle like, was from A Town. So I was yeah, like, that would have been crazy. Yeah, yeah. It made sense. That would have been crazy. Selection wise, it made sense. But it was, it was annoying to me because she was like putting her name in the verse as opposed to rapping the verse. Like the way <laughs> Ludacris like made it. <laughs> and. They ain't even fully commit to, to the to the A Town Stomp dance. Yeah, like, I was, was like, I was ready to start. I was like, bro, what's going on? Like, oh this my is God. this is a moment. I, I was ready. Yeah, I had yeah. my laptop in my lap. Mm-hmm. My man just calling me between breaks and shit. Yeah. I'm like, hold on, I gotta bust this little choreo yeah. real quick. But no, nah, that that took me off. Yeah. I feel like he should have just pulled a Mary J. Blige and did his own tribute. That's that. I, I tweeted that. I was like. Diamond. And again, Coco did well. Um, uh, no. You, was the sex like appeal Coco's in part? the room with us? <laughs> wow. You, you don't think Coco got sex appeal? She didn't have it at that moment. Mm. And to be honest. I enjoyed it, but but maybe I just. No, I'm, Coco just is Coco. so gorgeous. No, Coco <laughs> is drop dead yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. Drop dead gorgeous. Yeah. But it was awkward as hell. You can mm. tell she was <laughs> uncomfortable when she first got the blessing from the wife <laughs> and then did the little, like, she's, he's significantly older than yeah. her and she watched him. Girl, I would be nervous too. I ain't going, yeah. like, I'm not criticizing. Yeah. I'm like, I'm about to be get sexy for Usher. Mm. Like, that's that's a that's lot tough. of pressure. Yeah. That's tough. That's a yeah. lot of pressure, but I was not here. You wasn't feeling it? Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, and People were, like, going back and forth about, it being a reflection of the state of male R&B. And it's like, okay, whether it was intended to be primarily women or not, I feel like an Usher tribute should include men as well. Like, I don't know. Like, it, it, it would just make sense to me. But I was like, well, who, who would he pick? You're not putting Brand Fires up there. You're not putting Giveon on up there. I mean, Vito and Eric Bellinger, the people he picked for his tiny desk, who exactly. were in the audience yeah. watching the performance. Yeah, they would have yeah. been... They actually would have been decent. Tank was also there. Tank could have been dope. Like no, there. I don't think. I think they intentionally think, chose women. That's what yeah, I heard. Which is okay. which is fine, but I don't know. Do I don't know for me, like, it do y'all think sense. men turned it down? Do you think they asked them? No, nah. okay. I know that. Okay. I know Vito was pitched, mm-hmm. and okay. BT Production said, "No, we're doing an all woman tribute." Mm-hmm. It was that's intentional. The, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the case. Then. Yeah, I, yeah, I saw some artists tweet about how they submitted themselves, mm. and they were denied or something like that. So. Yeah, it was intentional. Like yeah. they did okay. what they wanted which, to yeah. do, which is fine. It makes sense. Like, yeah. and and I, you know, I think it, it showcased. Sense, yeah. It was a good opportunity for people, but I just think some of them didn't live up to like Marsha Ambrose is trying to sing Superstar she did not kill that yo I it, it was forgot that happened it was not it <laughs> it was not it, it was Kiki random. was not good to me I get it she the whole Las Vegas residency thing like I get it but that wasn't it for me no it wasn't yeah, I, yeah no yeah, sorry Ursher yeah <laughs> But uh, salute to him, you know. Well, like you said, class act. He, yeah. He, I I think he was just happy to get that recognition, even if the performance wasn't up to the standard it should be for an Usher tribute. Um, I think he's just also used to being treated that way. Mm. Like, you know, we were just questioning his vocal ability on Twitter a few Lake years ago, and he had to sing climax laying down. Lake is mm-hmm. crazy for that. Like the weekend got beside himself a little <sighs> bit too. Like, I don't care what sound or what producer is producing both albums at the same time. Like, Usher just did the goddamn Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Like, what did we... Eh. His residency. Like, come on now. What are we talking about It had to get extended like three, four, five times because of the demand. He's he's a different... Yeah, it's a different type of superstar. Yeah. Yeah. No pun. (laughs) Yeah. I I did want to say it. I see what you did there. Okay, okay. I did want to say it, but I was like... It was like an oop. I was saying who was going to catch it. Even the Chris Brown comparisons, and I'm Team Breezy, I think it's disrespectful. The Chris Brown comparison is the closest one, but even still... It's They're still in a different class. It kind of died... I feel like that died off recently, too. Like in the past few years, that like we was like people were comparing and then kind of just like I don't know if it was Usher getting the Super Bowl or something, mm-hmm. but people kind of stopped. They were kind of like, okay, yeah. well, when verses came around, oh, they yeah, started doing too. it again. Yeah. Oh yeah, 
So that's why it's fresh in my mind. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, listen, I'm Team mm-hmm. Breezy. He came out when I was 10. Mm-hmm. Like, ain't nobody telling me nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Usher is a singer mm-hmm. and has been singing at a high level since he was a child, like before he hit puberty. Let's <laughs> let's put some respect <laughs> on that man's name. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Just want to give you the chance to catch up. We never, we always want want the Miss Two B's takes on everything. So, Appreciate it. <laughs> but um, let's jump into something we alluded to earlier this weekend. Donald Trump <sighs> at a campaign rally in Pennsylvania <laughs> was shot. Now, I was out at City Winery on Pier Fifty Seven, sitting there drinking my pineapple mint margarita. Ooh, hanging. It was it was fire. It's that a good sounds one. It's fancy. A good one. It's a good. We we might have to hit city one. We got to add that to our list of pineapple mint group group ventures. But okay. um, sitting there sipping it, talking to my people. It was my boy's birthday, so we was hanging out. And then I checked my my Twitter. I go to one of my group chats, and someone sent the video. <clears throat> I was like, Trump got shot? What the fuck? Watch the video. I'm like, oh, niggas shot at him. Oh, shit. Like, this is real. This really happened. So he falls to the ground. Secret Service crowds him. He gets up. You see blood leaking from his ear. The nigga, like, makes it a point to be like, get out my way. Puts the fist up to the crowd. Like, acting like some hero. And social media, as per usual, social media is social media in that it was just jokes, jokes, memes. Oh, this nigga about to make his Many Men remix. Oh, this nigga about to win the election office. I thought he was going to win anyways because Joe Biden is doing a horrible job campaigning. Yeah. But this just helped Trump's case even more. Mm-hmm. Now he comes off like a martyr mm-hmm. to all these people. Mm-hmm. But just a, just a very wild situation. And again, again, another big thing to like be talked about as I'm outside enjoying being removed from social media and all these topics that be trending like i'm so you there. thought yeah so i thought I, you really can't get away you really can't get away but um I, I'll, I'll go and i would love for you to chime in please uh <laughs> pardon me black people can be so embarrassing we are black people can be so fucking embarrassing mr b's you said it a couple weeks ago when you was talking about chef g and all them niggas and how niggas love trump because of the stimulus checks and all this and i remember plies a couple months ago was like um uh trump said something about how the the the, the blacks or the black ones uh connect with me because i'm being discriminated against with these these cases and blacks get it and all this shit and i was and as i look at the way like black people sensationalize trump and praise him for all this shit i'm like y'all really kind of proven him right yeah like y'all it's disgusting joe budden says this thing where he says jokes aren't jokes if we never get serious and niggas have made trump a joke for so many years that you can't tell whether like people are trolling or they actually support him Mm. they do and so with this thing happening and it just immediately jumping to jokes i'm seeing black people saying yo trump really that nigga i'm like what is wrong with you what the fuck is wrong with y'all niggas no, he's not. He's he, he's really not. Like, it's it, it's just, it's it's honestly just really embarrassing for me to see, and it's just a real testament to like the state that this country is at, and the fact niggas can't sit back and critically think about how they can't. he's playing them and manipulating them, can't. using <laughs> these little touch points that he has. It's it's embarrassing. Like I'm, it's embarrassing. It's really embarrassing. The fact that just niggas are so easy to just sway in this way. It's... I'm mad at Fifty. <sighs> Fifty. Yeah. What do you say? Not... He performed many men with the uh, with the picture behind literally it. Literally hours after the shooting. No, he didn't. he he had the Get Rich or Die Trying album cover with Trump's head photoshopped where his head was. And he performed many men at the show. And Phil Lewis reported that he might make an appearance at the next rally. And yep, I, I did see I that. believe in Phil. Tr- and tr- tr- Trump's Facts. been, I mean, uh, f- Facts. I can't I believe- function without him. I believe in Phil. <laughs> Facts. Fiddy took a trip to D.C. a couple Real weeks shit. ago and met with, like, Republicans. Because there was that whole, the picture he took with the one lady where he was, like, he had, like, a flirtatious caption or something. And people were getting mad at him about it. Like, and honestly, 50 being leaning that way wouldn't surprise me anyway. Yeah, like, he's too rich to give a fuck. Yeah, the, like, these rich black people just operate in just different <laughs> parts of the world to where, like, the politics shit that matters to us, it don't matter to them because they're rich. Like, Yeah. Like, yeah, like, actually, I would like to see more broke niggas. Like, yeah, we're, we're raise their taxes. I'm good, though. Yeah. So... And if I'm not mistaken, during the last election, he was oh kind of leaning goodness. towards Trump also. His mm-hmm. ex had to let him know, like, you're a black man. Like, I would never 
what made me cringe was seeing people that I know online commenting mm. on it. Like, people who I know have never exercised their right to vote ever. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. Online. That's even worse. Commenting, like, yo, they try to take my boy out before he could give free money to the community. Where do they think this money's He's coming? not even president. What going, <laughs> like, <laughs> what is going on? Yeah, like, what it? And I'm just like, y'all What's are What's nigga's really thoughts process right now, bro? embarrassing. Yeah, like, it is. It, yeah. I'm scared. Like, yeah, I dead I gotta vote for Biden, bro. Everybody, yeah. yeah I mean, and it's like, in 2020, the whole lesser of two evils thing, Biden, it didn't feel as bad as it does feel right now. Like, right now, mm -hmm. I, I really don't want to vote at all. I don't. Right now, to. right now feels crazy. You're I'm right. Going right to, now feels like, uh, but I do not want to vote. It feels like a disaster. Like, Biden sucks. Catch twenty two. Trump really fucking sucks. And you know they're not going to risk Biden dying in office for Kamala to take over. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's the other thing. It's like, she never, she ain't great either. They ain't gonna let that happen. <laughs> she, she ain't great either. Like and, we, we really got nothing. Like, and like the young kids ain't fucking with them. Mm -hmm. Like Wap Dad was on Twitter speaking against Kamala, saying that she sent his mother to jail. I'm like, God damn, that's that's tough. And yeah. Kodak is online defending Trump. Like, chill. ASAP Rocky not even doing that. Yeah. Chill, Yak. Chill. The one who actually, <laughs> like, one of the few people who got pardoned. ASAP Rocky hasn't said shit. Nah, but ASAP Rocky had a full campaign. He was, like, locked up overseas. Like, mm -hmm. that was a thing that yeah. Trump was trying to use to yeah. win mm -hmm. and, like, you know, win us over. And it still didn't work. Yeah. But fuck that nigga. And shout out to the Exonerator Five because Donald Trump was also behind that shit. Mm -hmm. Tell them. And they had people in Flatbush scared to fucking take the trains just because ICE was outside gathering Tell them. people. I know someone who was Tell captured them. by ICE in Atlanta. Mm. And by the grace of God, the officer was Panamanian mm. and was just on some like, yo, Tell I'm about to use the bathroom. Tell them. And like, you know, allowed her to get away, mm. but it's it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, it's, I don't know. It's, I, I just think back to that 2016 election and just how not seriously people took it like writing in harambe on their <laughs> on their ballots. okay okay that. yeah niggas was outside their motherfucking mind Hennessy. what the hell is wrong with like voting for the liquor yeah. brand hennessy or even trying to justify i remember somebody tried to justify kanye trying to i was about to i was about to bring that up too i'm like my nigga bro kanye was on stage crying I um, like that, that. Uh, ooh, ooh, oh my god it was a crazy time. We, we, we're, we're lost <laughs> like like we we are we are so lost as a community and we and not we not us but we as niggas got to take accountability yeah. for the fact that we we willingly subject ourselves to this shit like niggas don't want to don't want to do better niggas are so stuck on stupid and stuck on jokes <laughs> that stuck they on stupid. like that they they just don't want to be better and they don't give a fuck it's like i i truly don't know what this country is going to look like in the next 5 years like i, I really don't know like you know, I we live our lives, we have our fun, we progress in our careers, but this shit really feels like, bro, what is this country going to be like in five years? Like, we've seen so much crazy shit happen over the last five, de decade, even even more than that. We've seen so much crazy, like shit that like you see in headlines that you would just never Real imagine tough. seeing. And like it just, it just happens shot. so often. Like, this shit is just, it's just a regularity. My you just kind of look at it. You're very desensitized to it because crazy shit is just happening so often. My nigga, they said aliens is real like two years ago. Nobody even gave a fuck. Like, like, oh, like, they've been real. <laughs> I know, yeah. but like the fact that like they an announced it for real, like everybody was just like, yeah, whatever. Like yeah. it's just, it's crazy shit happening all the time. That's just like. It's intentional. It's intentional. It's just but... be nuts. Like, yo, but Trump getting shot, that makes every every black person in the world be like Niggas this. excited for it, bro. Excited, like, yo, happy. He's, this nigga, bro. Bro, you, I know, like... try to kill my boy. I'm like, yo, what? Yo, man, go. So many, go niggas, fucking... so many niggas bought hats yesterday, bro. Niggas. Like, <sighs> the people are sick. I don't, I don't know, bro. I don't know what we going to do. Embarrassing. Speaking of embarrassing, uh, French Montana performed at the Beach Please Festival in <laughs> Romania this past weekend. And he brought out Andrew Tate. Y'all know who Andrew Tate is, right? Yeah. What, what, what the fuck do y'all think about French Montana aligning himself with this controversial influencer with rape human trafficking, and organized crime group allegations currently awaiting trial in Romania. How, how do y'all feel about French Montana? A, calling him, yo, this is my brother. I'm the first rapper to go on his podcast. This is my guy. Show love to my brother. Like, what? What's, what, what's going on? I, I, I think it's, it's like the same thing we was just talking about, um, Chef G and them. Yeah. It's like, what do y'all, like... 
what do y'all think? You think that's cool? Like, is that like shocking? And, and like, is that good? Does that get our attention? I mean, maybe, I but guess. like, I don't know. It doesn't for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> French allegedly got the same allegation, show. Mm. Mm. So why would well, he care? You well, know, message. I, it's it's just so fascinating to me. Like, I feel like with people in these situations. The fact that they do these objectively bad things, but they can get away with it and still have these large platforms, people look up to that. Is his platform large? Andrew Tate, yeah, he's, he's... no French. Oh no, no, I'm, I'm not talking about French. I'm talking about Andrew Tate. Okay, but I, but French That's a good co-signing him <laughs> for French's fan base, even though French is nowhere near as popping as he used to be. I think I'm the only person that can name three French songs, like like recent joints. <laughs> No, or not. just in general, I was about yeah. to say, <laughs> but um, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I, like a French cosign probably doesn't do much for Andrew Tate, but even still, it's, it's like the, the fact, fact that French it. either he isn't aware of what Andrew Tate has done, or he's aware but he thinks it's cool because this nigga is still a big deal despite doing this fucked up shit. I don't know what it is, but just like it's nuts to me. Like it's it's really it's really nuts to me because it's it's clearly not just like trolling. Like yo. He's that nigga, but like sitting back and being like, nah, he's actually fucked up. Like, no, I feel like Trump, like, not Trump, French really is like, nah, this is my brother. Like, he's actually like a lit nigga. Like, to sit down and do his podcast with him, despite all this shit is going on, like, you you really have an admiration for him. Or know. he's just probably getting paid too. Because a lot of that white media, that's what they do. They offer a bag to the French would definitely take that money he too. He would, child. <laughs> he would. You see him hopping on every trend. Yeah. He did a song. It was like hip shaking music, and then he was saying, "Don't play with it. Don't play with it." All in the same song. Like he like blended like three, four <laughs> trends in one, trying to get it to stick. He he's gonna take that bread. Yeah, French is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Did that documentary ever come out that he was supposed to drop? Like uh, about Africa? Yeah. <laughs> well, that, 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 that was like last year, right? I, I mean, I'm supposed... just I remember. No, was... I, I don't know. I'm asking. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't remember see. It. They were promoting it kind of crazy, and I just don't. I don't know. And he he had like a big actor who was um presenting it at mm-hmm. what's, what's that film festival? Tribeca. Tribeca. Yeah, like some big oh, actor I actually was supposed watched to be that one. Mm. And I do remember <laughs> that. It was like Drake was executive producing the. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Yeah. It felt. It felt. I don't know. I mean, I, I wasn't gonna watch it anyway, so Honestly. maybe it's out. Me I haven't seen it. It's but just, yeah, I, don't know. I probably would have watched it just because it's set in Africa, maybe. Yeah, because it always shocks me how African French Montana is. Yeah. yeah, so like to me, like that was cool, and like, oh, okay, like French, you doing something cool, and then you turn around and some shit like this is mm-hmm. like, nigga, now I'm I'm good. For yeah, I was I was about to give you a chance, but now I'm good. I'm good for real, nigga. And, and it's like I'm so past the point of holding rappers to the standard where they need to be yeah socially responsible and. Yeah conscious and all that shit like like i remember during the pandemic when everyone was pressing these celebrities to make statements and i was like why was annoying. like these people are not equipped to speak to these types of issues at all yes they have big platforms so they they them saying something would be beneficial but i'm not looking for fucking Lil dirt to talk to me about please don't like, to, to, to talk about this shit i, I don't need look like I'm, I'm educated enough to look at this observe it and assess it for what it is and create my own opinion Again, it would be great for these celebrities to stand by these causes, but they don't they don't even fucking know or care. So this situation is like I'm I'm not bothered by it because I don't look to French to mm-hmm. stand for anything. Mm-hmm. Maybe give me one bop a year at this point. Mm-hmm. But like it's still just like a really bad look on 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 his part. But yeah. Yeah. these niggas, man. Like we're, just, we're embarrassing. They crashing out, man. Really embarrassing. Really fucking embarrassing. Speaking of embarrassing, um, Yo. At, at, at the ESPYs, um, Serena Williams was on stage and she quoted Kendrick, not like us, and she came at Drake. And we know, like, they previously dated and Drake dissed her husband on her loss. And so Serena getting her lick back was like, you know, it, it, it made sense. But I think it speaks to what kind of what we talked about last week with Carrie and what Kaz was alluding to on his podcast. Like, the not not like us, the song, the video, the concert, fine. The way it's being co-opted in mass media is getting to be too much. And I remember you replied to me and said Kaz wasn't right, so I wanted to wanted you to like speak on that, and especially when you see something like this, like your perspective on um, the way not like us has transcended beyond the confines of hip hop and whether it's getting corny or not. 
Well, I would say it's circumstantial. Like in this specific case, she was named in the song. Mm -hmm. Um, And Drake is known for name dropping the women that he used to be linked to. Yeah. And it seems like the only person who doesn't really have a problem with that is SZA. And, um, you know, he be violating her husband. So, yeah. I if Like, in this case, it wasn't corny. It was mm. funny. But, like, yeah, the Kamala Harris thing. Anything they do at this point, the mm. Biden administration do at this point is corny. Like, yeah. Biden's about to appear on BT. <laughs> Um, and it, he just did an interview with Speedy, too. Yeah, he just did an interview with Speedy. Like, anything that they do is corny. But I did see, like, a um a soccer promo that said, not like us. Yeah. yeah. It, like, that's just what happens when things get so big. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, piggybacking off of Drake's point, Kendrick does have a lot of white fans. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they are, they're definitely going to want to join in on the fun. So, yeah. Um, but I do feel like it's the first time every time I hear that song and I ain't tired of it. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm not wop, wop, wop. I, she made one interesting <laughs> point. She talked about, like, the city of Toronto turning on Drake. And I was like, that's never they did? gonna happen. No. It, I, I don't know where she got that from. Like, it's never gonna happen. Yes, like, ever. Or that's the happening. country of Canada. Like, we literally just saw niggas beat up Rick Ross. <laughs> Bad. Because he played Not Like Us out there. Like, Bad. Canada, and huh. Drake is good in Canada. He's a sixth guy. Like, he's, he's fine out there. So, I don't know what she was trying to say, I don't know. Like sometimes you just you just embellish, you gas it a little bit when mm-hmm. you when you're getting at someone. I get it, but I was like, I feel like there were other things she could have said, and it was the SP stage. So you can't get too crazy with it. Yeah. But I was like, I don't I don't get what she was trying to get at there. Um, it's probably a if you know you know type of joke because could yeah. be that could be that. But um, yeah. yeah yeah I don't know I I I thought like it could have been executed a little better, but I do get why she personally would do that given their kind of back and forth over the years. Yeah. But um yeah, uh, kind of whack. Um new music, new music news. We got another track from Ice Spice, Ice Spice featuring Central Central C did it first. How do we feel about did it first, my people? I like the beat. <laughs> Shout, shout, shout out to my boy Riot. I like the beat. <laughs> the beat's hard. Um, and then I like Central C part. Like I just like I, not his part. Like when he says, "All right," like mm-hmm. when it, like that. He's that, got a great ad lib. The little yeah. like yeah, that little yeah, that shit is hard. But yeah. it's a decent song. I think I think it's 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 the best single she's dropped out of these singles. That's what I was gonna say too. Agreed. Yes. So yeah. the marketing was corny. Yes. Mm. I didn't like it. Yeah, people the marketing been, was corny. It's because like, yeah, people have like, been who are you fooling? Trying to figure out if they're it. dating. Like, who are you shit. fooling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, come on, y'all. Like, yeah. come on, bro. This it has it been much. Like, y'all went shopping and called paparazzi. Like, y'all could have <laughs> did a vlog. It's just, it's getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> and the song is cute, so they ain't even have to do all that. Exactly. Yeah, I do agree. It's the it's the best one of the of the single she's dropped this year. Mm-hmm. Um, still to me, a big thing is just the repetitive flows. The elementary lyrics. I, I was gonna tweet something. And I thought it was gonna be mean the other day, but I, there's a meme of this guy wiping sweat off his head, and I was gonna be like, "Ice Spice." After she says, <laughs> "She's a baddie," <laughs> she's wiping sweat because she gotta figure out what to say next. Because, bro, fuck, that's fuck. that's her line. Every single song she mm-hmm. says, he gets off. I'm a baddie. She's a baddie, mm-hmm. and I feel like she'd be in that studio like. What am I gonna say next? Like, what, what am I gonna yeah. say? Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. It's that like her lyrical content is very limited. Yeah, like it's she don't fight. She a baddie. Mm. She got the fat <laughs> butt. She don't fight, Ghost Rider. Cause don't you know fight. she gonna keep on. She, she gonna fight. keep starting with Lotto, but emphasizing that she don't fight. Fighting. And Lotto got a sister, mm-hmm. so you know it's like, girl, it. I I get what you're saying. Yeah. I, we do need something else. Yeah. I wonder if like who's writing for the girls, yo. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I wonder don't, if Nikki would ever write for the girls. I think she'd be willing to, but in the future. But like, as soon as someone crosses her, Nikki's exposing them for it. Like, now nah, she's gonna she's gonna get credit. But you need me. Like, she she cooking them. So it's like you got to stay on Nikki's good side. Like, Does Saucy she Santana still write for people? Yo, I was because he thinking. he's one of the best songwriters that yeah that we've seen in a, in a minute. I mean, I I just. I don't, I don't think the world's gonna accept it for him, but I think Facts. he will like do good for mm. if he writes some, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If he wrote for someone else, yeah, a lot of people would be like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, so I'm I'm very interested. In, I suppose his album drops this year, July 26th, or this month rather, July 26th. Oh, so I'm very for interested. real. Yeah. yeah. Facts. That's why she. I didn't even realize that. Like, Me, I, was, I mean, you just reminded. Me. Yeah, I was I, I was with my boys the other day, and she she came up, and I was like, I haven't liked her singles. Like, uh, whenever this album comes, it's going to be interesting. And one of my boys was like, oh, it drops July 26th. I was like, 
What? I should know that. I feel like I should have known that. Did she ever announce the date? And like he checked Apple Music. It, it says the date. I was like, all right, maybe she did announce it and I missed it. Can we talk about marketing? Because I really didn't even know that um the the Central Sea and Ice Spice collab was even out until mm. the pre pro doc. I yeah. ain't gone front. Like I thought that they were just previewing it. Yeah. Like I didn't know that the post meant like it's here. Mm-hmm. I thought they was just like marketing it, and it's just not clear to me these days anymore. Yeah. And that's the thing. I, I I learn more about what's out from these music pages yeah. than the artists sometimes. Like yeah. like you said, she was posting snippets, pictures, videos, all that shit. I, I think I think I did see one post where she was like, "Oh, it's out midnight or out Friday," mm-hmm. but. If you missed it, then you wouldn't have really known. Like, I don't know. It's shit don't be clear sometimes. It don't. And the way algorithms work, like, yeah. you know. You gotta be, yeah. You gotta be concise with Feel me? Pro- yeah. the way you promoting like marketing stuff because that algorithm, if you miss that algorithm, mm-hmm. people not gonna see it. Or if yeah. you don't engage with that artist. Yeah. If you don't oh yeah. If you don't engage with that artist, engage with somebody that you're trying to keep up with, yeah. it's a dub. Yeah. Like, it's no <laughs> surprise that we would get our updates from music pages because mm-hmm. we're looking at them for mm-hmm. news. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I did think it was a good record. It's like, it was like a minute 57. So I'm just like, uh, I get it in this era, short songs work. But I mean, uh, I feel like, especially with how crazy Central C went, they they could have like brought the hook around again, or she could have done another verse. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm always intrigued at letting the feature who watched you be the last verse heard. Like, you should come back. Should have brought the hook back. Should have brought the hook back again. Yeah. That's yeah. How like, dude, to do something just for, so you're the last, you can make the last kind of stamp on the song. Yeah, that makes sense. But it was good, though. It was good. Like, I was like, okay, this is, is cool. This is what I would like to hear. Right. But <sighs> a, full, a, a full album. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. The future's looking bleak. Yeah. Yeah. And actually... Uh, BT Awards weekend too. Lotto announced. I don't know if it was a new album or a new single, <laughs> but she announced her next whatever is titled Sugar Honey Ice Tea, which is obviously the acronym for shit, <clears throat> and which is like continuing her back and forth with Ice Spice. Ice Spice made the whole Thank You the Shit song, which was going at Lotto. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, damn, to title a whole album and make it a shot at this girl. I'm just like, damn, like. Whatever your issue is, like, and the fact that it's still ongoing to the point where you're pretty much dedicating a whole title of something to her, like, it's fake. It's interesting. They was at the BET Awards together, and ain't nothing happened, child. Mm. I mean, yeah, I don't, I, I don't see either one of them throwing hands. I, they just don't strike me as a type. But I'm just like, again, I don't know what the issue is. <laughs> like, it's it's so weird. The light bright. Yeah, the um, light bright. I don't know, but. I I think Lotto is due for an album, and we'll kind of get into this in our in the board meeting. But she hasn't dropped an album in like two years. She's been dropping a good amount of singles. Uh, put it on the floor, of course, and um, Sunday Service recently, and a bunch of different shit. So she's due. So I'm interested in what the album's gonna sound like and when it's gonna come, especially knowing that Ice Spice is dropping this month. So and knowing that Drake is probably influencing her. Yeah, that 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 um the Big Mama song. That's Drake. And then the song, the first song she performed at the BET Awards, like, oh, you're you're like you're fully leaning into this Drake bag. Like, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. It was it was good though. It was yeah. good. Like that that that, that first. Mm-hmm. Song I mean, she that's did. the formula we like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it, I was like, okay, Lotto. Like, mm. I've never heard you get like this. I didn't like, even peep that. I ain't, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, from the beat switch mm. to the flow, I was yeah. like, and then when my when my friend pointed it out to me, she's like, "This is a Drake song." I was like, "Bitch, that's why I'm obsessed with it right now." Damn. It's that as a Drake song. Mm-hmm. I kept playing it I over, Pete, even though what do I get for my birthday? Mm-hmm. I bet Drake wanted to say that shit himself, but no, he couldn't. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a little too sassy for <laughs> him. <so>. Me? <laughs> uh, I, I I gotta listen again now. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Def- Y'all just def- put def- me on. Check it, but yeah, and and good song like i was like hey man if, if drake wrote it for her it worked like she, listen this is what this is what happens when you lock in with a writer hey sometimes you lock it, in with a writer it's it cool works. collaboration is key um i do want to apologize for making y'all listen to this next album because it, it was a struggle for me to get through but <sighs> eminem the death of slim shady coup de gras <laughs> i did laugh a lot me too <clears throat> me too I, I did i did this is what a 19 song album 19 song album um, features from J.I.D., Big Sean, Baby Tron, Skylar Gray, <sighs> Sky Piper, Sly Piper, um, White Gold. <sighs> what, why is Eminem still putting out albums? He probably is under legal. I, yeah, I don't know. 
He on his own label right now. Yeah, um, facts. Oh, so he's doing this for fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, shady, oh, shady he's not aftermath. contractually obligated. <laughs> shady oh, aftermath, just interscope, just interscope, but 2024 Marshall B. Mathers. So like, no, like uh, y'all said, I laughed a lot listening to it. I did like it was cool seeing Tron on there. Like, okay, Tron, mm-hmm. you're on an Eminem album. That's like, that's fire. Like, just for younger people and just you know underground. I think it's interesting and kind of tight. I've never been like an Eminem fan, but mm-hmm. like. I bet there's like so many like middle aged like white people like so fucking happy right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, they got Eminem, they got Trump getting shot with the fist. <laughs> it's lit. Like, it's lit for them right now. Like they not like us. Like or they not? <laughs> are we not like them? Like <laughs> gangsta, bro. Like they are going crazy. Oh, no, for real. So yeah, we I not just... like them. <laughs> <laughs> And we not, not like them, <laughs> but um, yeah, man. I just think it's yeah. I just think it's funny right now because I you know there's so many middle aged like white men just bumping Eminem on the train right now, going crazy. Like. Yeah, I do appreciate him for being himself always, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like mm-hmm. very it's predictable. Do. Mm-hmm. Don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. That's what made like that's what tickled me while I was listening to Thanks. it. Like. Yo, Eminem facts. is still Eminem. Yeah. He's still facts. He's yeah. got literal lines where on the album where he's like, I'm trying to get canceled or I'm, I'm, I'm going to get canceled or something like that. And he's bringing up Megan Thee Stallion's foot or he's dropping so the word f- or just random shit. Like, just do it. Like, whether it's shock value, whether he's trying to, like, restore the feeling of 2003 where you can just call him. <laughs> it was giving that. Really, like whatever the case is, that like, he, he's fine. doing it. And for me, it's like, why? But I, for him, it's like, He's older, you know. Maybe he feels like the world has gotten too soft or political, politically correct, whatever. Sure, I get it. This is just not for me. So listening to these 19 songs was definitely a drag. I did end up saving a few. I liked Habits with White Gold. Habits was dope. I liked Evil. Um, I liked Road Rage. And something about a Skylar Grey hook. Like, I don't know. I'm a I'm I'm a sucker for Eminem and Skylar Gray linking up. Skylar Gray be smoking on them shits. She got a great voice. I'm sorry. I I, I I be rolling. Temporary came on. I was like, this nigga got me. Man. He got me. I'm not gonna front. He got me. He got me. I'm, I'm easy. What can I say? I'm easy. Skylar Gray got me. Hell no. You Skylar got Gray be going weak. crazy. You but got me um, weak. yeah. Otherwise, I'm just like, yeah, nah. I I truly just don't. Need, and this is why for the last few albums I just haven't pressed play because yeah. undeniably Eminem can rap well. Yeah. His the accents he uses, the rhyme, the slant rhyme, the technical ability is yeah. there are very few people you can put ahead of him. The song making at this point in his career doesn't interest me. And the the concepts, the shit that he talks about there's really no point in my life where I like whether I'm commuting to work, whether I'm sitting in the crib, whether I'm with the homies pre-gaming for something like maybe at the gym, maybe when I get back in the in the gym more consistently, I'll play the Eminem and I'll go to another level. But there's no aspect of my life right now where <laughs> I'm thinking to play Eminem. Don't put right that Eminem on, son. Yeah, it's it's just it's not a thing for me, and so yeah, no. that's why like. I put it on the docket for us to talk about just to get the concepts. I was like, damn, if I put this here, I actually got to listen to it. When I'm going to listen to this shit? And I was like, I'll just listen to it all on the way to, to the pod because I know I got like a two hour commute. But goddamn, this, it just, I'll, I'll never play any of this again. Yeah, replay value is low. <laughs> yeah. Damn, I'll they're never, non-existent. Yeah. I'll never play any of this again. It's like, it's crazy too because like you think about the shit that he dropped early in his career, obviously the fucking Lose Yourselves or even the later shit with Lil Wayne, like Drop the World and... Um, I said, I'm sorry, mom. Yeah, yeah. That, like, <laughs> he, he had such... He had shit that actually did have replay value. Well, he was on drugs. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. My nigga yeah. Stan, so crazy. Stan, like, of yeah. course, of course. Predicted the whole culture right now. Right. Oh, yeah, God. absolutely. And it's just... Like, it's crazy. Video you know, crazy, yeah, bro. Yeah, we, yeah, we see yeah. certain legacy acts age well, like Nas, for example. I, I, mm-hmm. I've i loved what he's done he's in recent years. He's crazy. Yeah. Perfect, like, almost. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. smoking everything that he's on. Him yeah. and Hit Boy are yeah, matching. Hit boy shit was crazy. Like that's perfect what he did. Got him his first Grammy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then we see like I'm trying to think of other legacy acts that are doing pretty well for themselves. Um, it's not too within many. rap. Yeah, within rap, not too many. But they all outside though, yeah. and that's definitely a conversation, a deeper conversation for us to dive into. Because yeah. 
they're outside and they're trying. doing the th- yeah, they're yeah. trying. Yeah. Like common is everywhere. Him Common's dropping Rock. the P Rock soon. Uh, yeah, that album's actually gonna be good I, too. That, that album's gonna be like yeah. That ass, and I was looking at Pete Rock. Yeah. He's a handsome man. <laughs> I, I'm like, oh, you are a handsome man. Like you are aging beautifully. Shout out to you. Black don't crack. You know it don't. I mean? <laughs> uh, but no, I agree that that single they dropped was really good. So it's I'm actually good. like, I actually really like Common. Like, I Common's forgot good. that. I low key forgot about his ability. Bro, I was listening yeah. to Common B recently, like that. He's album. dope. He's dope. Could, could Common be going crazy on some shit, mm-hmm. but yeah, Eminem. I don't know. It's just like it's 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 a nigga who's like if it, it feels like he's trying to remind people how well he can rap every time he drops. It's like, bro, we know. Like we we were there in your prime. <laughs> like we have a Pavlovian response. <laughs> to my palms, uh, palms are sweaty, knees weak. Like, like, bro, we, we, like you, you've given us so. Like, we know you don't have to show us any anymore. But it, it feels like he's trying to recapture, or even create some new type of whatever for himself. And it's just like, bro, like, uh, it's hopefully this is the last one for a while. I doubt it. But I doubt it. I doubt <sighs> when it. you got your own record label, child, yeah, so you can do whatever the fuck. Yeah. You want. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This nigga might drop a double disc. Yeah, uh, the deluxe next week. I was about to right. say we're probably getting a, a deluxe for this album, bro. <laughs> we, we probably will, but um, yeah, you know, I, I it was. I'm glad that I enjoyed some songs, but for the uh, actually, JID went really crazy. What song was he on? Uh, Fuel. JID. J- it was good to hear him on this song, but it also made me think about and this could be a whole other conversation um i I remember like 2018 when people were talking about jid was like the heir to the dreamville throne (laughs) like when when j cole steps away jid is gonna be that guy and i sipped the kool-aid for a little bit and then years have passed jid's given us what like two albums since 2018 maybe one or two he did his thing on the dreamville project he's been doing all these features all that whatever I, I don't I don't believe it anymore. I I just don't think I that I, I don't think there's anyone who can. No one's gonna fill Cole's shoes for from that label. Nope. But especially not JID. I I just don't think that he has the the transcendent like character to to go beyond. Like Cole, even if he's very hip hop, he appeals to the masses. Mm-hmm. JID just doesn't have. And even when he's doing songs with Imagine Dragons, he's doing shit with. That that uh that girl win I don't know if he I know, <laughs> will knows you you know win yeah. is too yeah like yeah. he's done songs with win whatever like, happened to her Jesus Christ I feel like she I haven't seen she, her. she she she's still dropping shit I just feel like you haven't seen she her. Just, she just dropped a new song Friday oh that's your girl you tap in I'm, I mean I'm look at this I'm thing. aware like, he's he's tapped in I'm aware we gonna, we gonna tap in yeah, okay I'm aware <laughs> but but um uh-huh. but yeah like doing songs with win like jd has been around but I'm just like like. I don't know, something about his future on this Eminem album made me really th- think about it. I was like, you and, you and Eminem are kind of similar, but Bye. you're black. Like, Eminem can rap like this, but just him being white expands who, you know, wants to listen to him and appeals to him. Like, he's a white rapper. He's this, he's this like, novelty, mm-hmm. you know, to corky, his people. Corky cool. Like, yeah. J.I.D. Right. rapping like that don't really do it for niggas because it's like, we, there's a lot of niggas who can rap really well. That's everyone's point as to why Eminem shouldn't be in anyone's top five. It's because he's, he's white and can rap like, like that. You're only giving him props because he's white. Mm-hmm. There's, if it doesn't sound cool when a black person does it. That's what um, Mel Mo said. We call, it's it, true. We call niggas yeah. nerds that rap. It's so, true. That's what, yeah. <laughs> we be call- it's true. <laughs> we be calling it. It's, it's something I've thought about. I'm like, damn, like if, and it's such a crazy if statement, but it's like if Eminem were black, would, would niggas care like this? We it's wouldn't. Like, well, it's, like the, it's like the meme, like the empowering. Yeah, uh, but like the same picture, but it's like empowering nerd ass nigga. Like, <laughs> like For flirting you, versus harassment. Yeah, like jet ass, like jet ass, like. And, and Eminem also had the benefit of like big cosigns, Dr. Dre, mm-hmm. and then like he kind of helped usher in Fifty. So it's like all these real niggas, fuck with him, cosign you. So you're always gonna be stamped within the culture. Um, you know the work you did with D12 and all that. Like yeah. you know, just so many real, and then giving us Griselda, like you know. E- even, even the Eight Mile movie, yeah, of course, oh absolutely, that was absolutely. Just... His stardom got pretty, pretty damn big. Yeah, he was massive. He was pretty, pretty damn big. Like he, he was the artist of the two thousands for a reason, bro. Like he was. Yeah. Well, that's he, when he they were making crazy. stars. Yeah, yeah facts. There, you. We can't think of anyone who's new that 
we would really care about like the last exciting thing that happened in the game was Drake and Kendrick beefing and mm-hmm. they were like 15 years in. Yeah. That, like, that Dre, <laughs> that Dre co-sign too back in the day was so crazy. Right. It was everything. It was like you That's were really like chosen like because he, he had, he had Eminem first and then 50. Yeah. Because they were making 50 in the lab in the video. Mm-hmm. Right. Which was insane. Yeah. <laughs> Like I remember, like I can, I remember seeing that video the first time as a kid. Bring music videos back, yo. Oh my god, I'm thing. picturing it right now. You, I, as I can you see, said it. I know. Like Fifty about to come down. Yeah, right like here. Sh- and the beat start playing. Like you're like, oh my god, like I'm watching the greatest thing I've ever seen in my fucking life. Bring like, back music, yo. My grandma to this day calls me every birthday. Like go, nigga. shorty, it's your birthday. <laughs> my mom every does my birthday. bro. That's psh, in the cl- man. Yeah, I, like, I, oh my gosh, I, bro. I, Literally. Sometimes my like editors will give us a music video to write about, and I'm like, wow, if you didn't make me cover this, I would not have watched. Like, I, I just don't care about music videos mm-hmm. anymore. Unless mm-hmm. they're like my favorite artists. I don't just, back in the day, we would sit, BET would play like BET Start or BET Now, like in the morning, mm-hmm. and you would watch that shit, mm-hmm. and you would know all mm-hmm. the new I music do that videos. Now. It would be dope. Shout out to you for that. For BT Her, it does it. Mm. And oh, on fire. Thursdays, they do throwback. That's fine. Oh, fire. Yeah, so That's I'll fire. be on it. I, I, I wouldn't have known. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, it real. I was like, it had to be, maybe like once I hit high school, I just didn't care about music videos as much. High anymore. school, yeah. No, it had to be around college. I'm trying to think. It, it might have been high school for me. Mm. I nah. feel. Like, I feel like in high school, I didn't. I didn't care about music videos as much anymore. Hmm. Maybe. Well, I know it's like hand in hand with the cancellation of 106 and Park, and like you know, music video countdown. Well, shows. what year did 106 and Park get get officially canceled? I don't know, but was that high school? Well, you're the you're the one that's good with time, so it yeah, could have been was, high school. I, I was in high school 09 to 2013, so yeah, we were in high it, school. It the same might time. have been between. Them. I, mean, I also have a computer here, so I can just look right. it up. <laughs> but when, yeah, it's so crazy how we're in this visually driven society, content driven culture, and like people are not making visuals. Like Nikki is never gonna drop the video for everybody because she doesn't need to. Well, Park ended oh in December 2014. Video was so crazy. it was the end of high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I was th- that was my first semester of college, but I think even so, I-, I wasn't watching. Aside from like the award shows, I wasn't watching BET like that. I remember literally being in Ohio though, and and watching, let's say like ASAP Rocky Peso video, yeah. and being like legendary video. Yeah. Oh my God, New York's the coolest place. Like, like, but like, I feel like that's like the last, not the last, but like that era. Th- yeah, that I can think like of caring about music videos for real. For I'm, real. I'm trying to think about memorable because Peso videos. was crazy. Purple swag. Like he had the white girl with the with the with the goals. I'm just thinking about Rocky videos right now. But yeah, I remember yeah. Wiz Wiz uh, reefer party niggas like because he was just smoking so much weed and the shit. Like <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. everyone wanted to be Wiz back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Yeah, it's just it's just different times, and I just think Eminem isn't you know fully tapped in with what these different times are. So it yeah. is what it is. Um, lastly, on the new music, new music news tip, uh, JT announced she has a tour coming called City Cinderella, and this will be to support her solo album. What do y'all feel about City Girls? And they they kind of clarified that they're not breaking up; they're just doing solo shit. W- what do you think, like? Will it be a successful venture for either one of them? I know JT OK has, done, has been doing pretty well for her. Like, do you think the City Girls doing solo shit but still remaining a duo will be successful? We've been seeing people struggling with their tours, selling out arenas, like selling anything. Like, will this tour be successful for JT? Will the album do well? Like, well, what are your feelings on this City Girls non-split, but, you but know, split. but doing solo shit? Yeah, I think I think my girls have more ground to cover mm-hmm. as a group. Um, it feels like I'm watching rap shit because, you know, that got canceled. <laughs> so it's like, damn, art really imitates life sometimes. Mm-hmm. But um, I think JT would do well. Mm-hmm. Um, she is the one. She is the city girl who actually wanted them to rap. Like they were beefing mm-hmm. with someone in their hood. And she's like, yo, let's drop this diss track. And. Miami just supported her friends. So mm-hmm. I do think um, JT's solo career would do well. Um, I'm not sure about tours because mm-hmm. we're not really in a touring culture. Um, but she did really good with like the club appearances. Yeah, yeah. So I won't mm-hmm. be surprised if, um, you know, she'll do like smaller venues or like, you know, just depending. It will be like depending on the market and the demand. But 
I think JT will be fine. That Jeezy feature, she upped it with that. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, mm. like, all of her singles mm. been going. Mm. And, like, even before the non-split split, <laughs> she would have, like, the standout verses. Yeah, she was always the one. Like, so I think she's going to be good. And yeah. Miami is going to do, like, you know, the brand lifestyle mm. thing. And she's going to be, like, the personality and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I I I agree with everything this dude he's just said. Like, I think JT is gonna be fine. Mm. You can tell she takes it. I wouldn't say she takes it more serious, but maybe yeah. she does on the artist side. Just that's you know, like. she that's wants what it. She, yeah, yeah, she wants it. She wants it. You can yeah. even just tell the way she starts styling herself and like the mm-hmm. the photos she's taking now and how much more it just seems a lot more tasteful and a lot more directionally. I want to do this. I want to do this, and I want to do this. Yeah, and then you know, Miami. Like you saying, she's gonna do more brand, get it out there a little bit more. But yeah, I, I keep an eye on JT. JT mm. might do something yeah. for real, for real, actually, because mm. OK's fire, and then the GZ shit, she upped it upped crazy. It. Mm. So it's now it's like I'm want to hear more. Like mm. what else? What else you got? Yeah. She might have some more hits. Because so. everything that she dropped stuck so far. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's like, all right, mm-hmm. sis, what's next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited for her. I, I've 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 enjoyed the City Girls throughout their career. I I I didn't listen to the last album. I think it was called uh, uh, Raw, which was like what was it? Yeah, it was um, the color. It was like the colorful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what, what what the acronym stand for? Um, <laughs> I'm, well, I'm good on Raw. It. Uh, what was it? Real at I don't even was remember. Was it real ass whores or something like that? Something like that. I don't know. I, I forget. But I, I didn't was, listen either. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna hold you. I didn't. But like you know, city girls that of course act up, twerk. Like they've got stuff. But pussy talk. I love pussy talk. I'm not gonna hold you. It's Bad. A it's a great song. Yeah, it's a great Doja, song. Doja Wolf. It's a great song. Don't just, don't just snap on that shit. But um, yeah, I've I've, I've always rocked with them. I, I think that they they were a good duo. duo but JT was always the one. Mm-hmm. She was always the one. So I think you know it'll be interesting to see what she does solo. So looking forward to it. Um, let's jump into this lunch break real quick. Um, one thing from the NBA. So um, the New York Knicks in all of their offseason moves, they have officially signed Jalen Brunson to a four-year, $156 million max extension with the Knicks. Now, the, the uh, prevailing narrative with this move is that Jalen Brunson left $113 million on the table, and a lot of people have been calling Jalen Brunson stupid <laughs> as a result of that and i i have like i i look at this two ways one like the playing in the nba is your job make as much money as you can like but niggas play for different reasons some niggas play because they want to win titles some niggas play because they want accolades some, some niggas want to play they love basketball they want to make as much money as they can it's clear that the knicks want to they believe they could win a championship and they want to have the roster flexibility to build a championship winning team. Mm -hmm. And so Jalen Brunson being their superstar and taking a pay cut helps them do that. And so I, I I respected the move just in terms of team construction and in getting to a championship. Like he, he could have been selfish and took all possible bread that he could have made, but he knows, you know, the Knicks still have a couple moves that they need to make. And so it's like, But it also kind of puts him in a lose, lose, lose situation because, one, people are calling him stupid now for taking the pay cut. (laughs) Two, he takes the pay cut. They make another move to add someone to the roster to win a championship, but they don't win a championship. So he did all that for nothing. And then three, um, he gets all the money possible that that, that he could have made. And then he never wins a ring. And then the narrative is like, oh, like you want your career ringless, like Carmelo Anthony or Charles Barkley, all these niggas who have never won rings. Make as much money as you want. But like you like you can't win with with the NBA narratives like you either you you either don't have a ring or you didn't take the money. So there's no win in there. I, I, I really like the move. I liked how selfless it was. And I, I think for me, obviously, being a nigga who's never had a million dollars, like <laughs> I feel like one, once you're at the point where you're making 100 million. I mean, obviously, a, another hundred million is a very big difference. But like me, I'd be like, oh shit, I'm, I'm, like yeah, like you know what? I'll take a pay cut for the betterment of the team. Obviously, things happen. You can get injured. Like there's there's all these unnatural circumstances that you can't control. But in the pursuit of rings, like you know, you do what you you do what you can for the team. And this sets Jalen Brunson up for after his contract expires, he can sign an even bigger deal, even bigger max deal. So it, it was a good long term play for the benefit of the team and 
he's still making a hundred fucking fifty six million dollars. Like he he's straight. So he sound loyal. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's an unprecedented move because we haven't seen we haven't seen someone do this in a long time. A lot of people always take the always take the money, mm -hmm. like always take the money. But I think there is one scenario that you that you didn't mention that could happen. Like, what if they do win a ring? Right. And then what yeah. if, if what if they do win a ring and then he gets the max again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then, so then, like, I mean, that's a that's a scenario. If that happens, I feel like everybody's gonna have to just literally, literally kiss the ring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, bro. Like, yeah. I took a pay cut. I got all my homies from college with me too. Mm -hmm. They're getting paid. We won a championship mm -hmm. in New York fucking city, which life will is be good. Yeah. will be insane. Yeah, life. Yeah. And then I'm gonna get my extra max too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, y'all niggas can. Yeah, Eat it, Frank. It's over. <laughs> yeah. like, and didn't yeah. they make it far last time? Yeah. So it's like they possible it that they can't. Yes, yes. They made it to the second possible. round. Granted, they had a lot of injuries, and I, I fully believed if the Knicks were fully healthy, they would have went seven games with the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. Like it would have been a really good series, mm -hmm. but they lost mm -hmm. Randall like midway through the season or towards the end of the season. They lost OG on Anunoby in the playoffs. They lost a bunch of guys. Like yeah. Jalen Brunson was literally like that was their last hope, and then he got injured in the game seven. So they got a real chance. They do. They do. That's they absolutely do. So they absolutely do. So I, I I salute Brunson for it. You know I I get it. Like you you want you want to get your bag, but you know. And, and now the city even supports him even more. Absolutely. So now like he I mean the city was already like on him like for real. Mm -hmm. Now it's like. Yeah, you're oh, a New, yeah. New Yorker forever. You don't have to pay for a meal here. Like, yeah. So, because you wouldn't see a lot of guys do this. Like, I don't think James Harden would have ever done this. Bro, niggas take the money. I don't Never think a uh, fucking. Niggas take the money. A lot of time. these stars like, wouldn't do it. They'd be time. like, I'm getting my bread. Yeah. You, you front office, figure it out. Yeah, y'all figure it out. <laughs> figure like, it out. I'm, those I'm, are my I'm getting my bread, though. <laughs> those are my homies, but I'm going to need mine. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm getting my Gangsta, bread. Thanks to, bro. I need mine. Yeah. But it's like, I get it, but. I don't know. And I guess maybe the athlete in me who has never been paid to play, the way I view it is always you join these leagues to win at the highest level. Like, yes, you can make this bread, but if I'm playing in the NFL, if I'm playing in the NBA or the MLB, I want that feeling of winning a championship. And if I'm on this team and I believe in this team and I fuck with these niggas, I'm going to do what I can. If I'm the star, even if I got to make a little less money for a shorter period, short period of time, Bro. bring in the best guys to help me win. Like I, I want to, I don't want to be viewed as a loser. I don't want to look at myself as a loser, bro. Even if I'm making bank, bro. They're making so much money now too. I, I don't know if you saw this, but it was like, um, they brought up like this old, this old. It was like a a date in history where Tim Duncan was about to sign with the Magic mm -hmm. for like sixty seven million dollars, and someone said. Yo, that's what they get paid per per year now. Like it's like it was crazy. Like and it was like that shit wasn't even that long ago. Yeah. So I, if you think like Wimby's next contract, his that's next month, especially with these new TV contracts and streaming mm -hmm. contracts, yeah, it's about to be up, bro. People yeah. are already getting. You're gonna see like a three hundred million dollar contract. It's gonna be like nuts. shit. They Money just printing nuts. them things yeah. out, man. Yeah. 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 So. Salute to Brunson, man. I got I got a lot of respect for him. A lot of respect for him. Um, lastly, WWE stuff, but kind of connected to hip hop. Um, we recently saw a commercial. Metro Boomin appeared in the WWE Bad Blood commercial. Uh, Future and Metro's GTA played in the commercial, so I am assuming that Metro will be there. I'm gonna be there in Atlanta for Bad Blood, so I'm excited to see what they do. They've been doing a lot of hip hop activations type stuff, like we talked about Sexy Red. And Meek at WrestleMania and all this. So I thought it was really cool. It's cool to see Metro. You know, even if you've been acting a little wonky with the whole, with the whole thing. <laughs> you've been acting a little wonky. But, you know, salute to Metro getting that WWE bag. I, I know he's a real fan. Like, he'd he be, he be tweeting about it and shit. And the recent uh, Wireless Fest, he came out with a belt when him and uh, Future performed. So it's like, right. He's definitely going to be there. Yeah, yeah. When is it? October. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that should be cool. It'll be pretty cool. So I'm, 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 I'm going to be out there, you know. Hopefully everything stays peaceful, you know. Right. I don't, I, I don't want to have to, you know, call call up Chubs and all that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But nah, salute to Metro. Super cool. Super cool. Uh, let's jump into this board meeting. So I wanted to do a mid year music check in, and you know, obviously there are the dominant topics this year, but I I just wanted to kind of assess what this year has been so far with y'all. I saw Elliot Wilson recently put out an article for Up Rocks where he ranked his best songs, the best albums, and he called this the best year in hip hop. And I was like, really? <laughs> like, are you sure? Like what? 
What what exactly you are, said we, best are year we doing? Ever? Best year ever? Like since when? I don't I don't know if you said like since no, let, let me see. But I yeah. I know that there, there, there was like a poll quote where he was like this has been the best year in hip hop and I was like uh, okay. I mean playing devil's advocate there has best been best year of hip hop ever. Oh ever. <laughs> Hashtag He's 2024. Too old for that. And, and he tweeted that 2 months ago so that was what May. Jesus <laughs> He also said the 2020s have stunk until now. Really? That's what he said. So that was fascinating to me because I'm just like, are, are, are we really grading this off of the obvious thing? Correct. Like, is, 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 is that really what we're going to do? Correct. And if that's what we'll be doing, then okay. But no. And to be honest, that just shows that it's even more boring. Yeah. Because why are two men, you know, 40 year old men, who are like 15 years into their career, the most exciting thing that happened. Like, even why is Beyonce still carrying it? Why is Nicki still carrying it? Like, who are the new acts that are going to take the torch from these people? And I'm Mm -hmm. not complaining. These are my people. So Mm -hmm. if they want to reign forever till they're old and wrinkly, then Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. But like... My cousin be, like, arguing with me. Like, we be, like, trying to claim ownership over certain artists. Like, girl, you don't know Chris Brown or Drake or Nicki. Like, you don't know any of these people. You Sit down. There. You was not there. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, then th- th- that was my feeling. Like, me me and my boys, when, when Like That dropped and when, you know, the record started to roll out and everyone was like, yo, rap is back. Niggas is rapping again. Hip-hop is lit. I'm like, first of all, niggas have been rapping. Like that, that that's been happening. You just haven't been paying attention to it. Like Snoop said, Oh, the Drake Kendrick beef encouraged people to rap again. I was like, Well, what's 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 what's, what's the evidence of that? I haven't seen anything that's blown me away since that beef and been like, Oh, that's they clearly rapped that well because of that shit. Like well, absolutely Chris not. Chris Brown shocked me. Uh Chris Brown and Quavo, yeah. That was, that was, <laughs> that was a that shocker. Was that, that was good. I'm not gonna front. It, it, it was going at it. It was going at it. Especially the oh shit ad lib. I was like, Yeah, oh, nah, he was cooking. Chris. He was cooking. They was cooking. But um, yeah, I'm just like, the just the reactions to it. I'm just like, all right, cool. We have, we have this really amazing moment. Let's, let's move that aside. We've talked about that. Enough. Let's move that aside. Yeah. Let's look at what we've gotten this year. Best year ever to me is insane. Even calling it a good, I, I've been bored. Same. I've been like, do, do y'all remember 21 Savage dropped album in January? You, you probably that forgot. Was January. You forgot. You probably forgot. You know what? <laughs> I don't even know now because I remember I was telling my manager, let's put Red Rum for a social media post mm. that we did in February. Where Red Rum has gotten traction on like yeah. social media and stuff, which I'm, I'm not mad at that. But I, I remember like, you know, it's always impressive to me when someone wants to kick the year off and drop in January because January is usually a pretty dead month. Mm-hmm. So 21 mm-hmm. dropping in January is like, okay, that's cool. Mm-hmm. And he's riding a crazy wave of momentum. Her loss, being on the tour with Drake. All the big features, like his profile is elevated. And so mm-hmm. I was looking for him to elevate musically because I was kind of, he, he was featured on, on everything. It was kind of getting a little old to me. I was like, all right, I want to see what you could do on your project. You've been kind of, I don't want to say riding Drake's coattail, but you've been next, you've been next to Drake. And mm-hmm. it's, you know, your profile has grown as a, as a result of that. So your album, let's see what you can do on your album. I listened. I wasn't impressed. I was pretty bored throughout all of it. Like it didn't, it really didn't move me. So I was like, all right, off to off to a disappointing start, 2024. Like that album had no replay value for me. I I remember niggas the day it dropped, like yo, 21 snapping. Niggas was not talking about it a week later. <laughs> niggas, nobody cared a week later. So I'm just like, yeah, okay, all right, whatever, cool, I guess. Um, but um, yeah. So I I, I would love for y'all to offer like, you know, we got favorite projects, biggest disappointments, most anticipated releases. Who do you think is due to drop this year? Like wherever y'all want to start, I, I I would love to hear from y'all as much as uh as much as myself. I, I get a lot of thoughts on on this year, and most of them not good. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> and I, I, I'm gonna try to stick on the positive because I feel like I have made my point about how underwhelming <laughs> shit is and mm-hmm. has been. But um, you know, shout out to my girl Nikki, that Queen album. Oh um. Uh, Pink Friday 2. Pink Friday 2. Yeah. I said Queen. Pink <laughs> Friday 2. Um, that was a very good. Yeah. Very that good was album. a solid yeah. project. And like, honestly, I don't usually like Nicki's projects. Mm, wow, it's really? a very good album, actually. I don't know. I, I usually like like her singles or like her features or like some songs on projects. But like, 
I don't always enjoy her projects in full because, you know, Nikki just likes to experiment and she likes to just display like her full artistry. And I don't like everything that she does all the time, mm -hmm. um, like the singing stuff. She be singing a lot. And and especially more it. lately. I Everybody's like a smash, though. Like, I feel like yeah. she experimented and that experiment like blew up like, yeah it was like yeah. yeah that was a good yeah, yeah. Right. and she also yeah. showed ain't nobody selling but her i ain't gonna lie Gangsta. like people want to be talking about you know album Gangsta. sales and i would never forget when her and travis scott was going head to head mm -hmm. and she gave travis scott cocksucker the day <laughs> because he was selling merch instead of music mm -hmm. and she said that he thought he was slick bringing kylie and stormy out mm -hmm. i was like nikki you can't be saying the truth like that mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that was a good album. A, a lot of a lot of good records. I, funny enough, I actually really liked Queen from 2018 that you brought up. Same. I, that, th I thought that was a really good that, album. I enjoyed that album pe too. Pe people kind of slept on that joint. It was really good. Um, but yeah, we got Nicki in December 2023. I know people kind of looped that in 2024. Bryson too. Bryson Drake and um, Kendrick took his shine, but yeah. he had a good little project. Bryson album was good. Well, you still haven't listened, huh? Bryson's. Yeah. I listened to a, I listened to a little bit of mm -hmm. it, but not not the full thing. Okay. I mean, not it's not moving thing. enough for you to go back and yeah. be like, oh, I'm gonna listen to it again. Mm. But you know, if you're you know a fan, what, you, you know what, it. you know what though, bringing up the biggest cocksucker, Travis Scott, <laughs> Utopia is probably one of the biggest disappointments. And even though I was not like waiting on waiting for it, but I was like, I was okay excited for kids. Like, yeah, I'm mm. like, yeah, Travis Scott's about to drop, and it's gonna be like, yeah, yeah like that. Nobody like everybody hated that shit. Like the kids, everybody hated yeah. it. <laughs> it's like, damn, yeah. even the kids hated it. Like. I wanted him to have a win after that, you feel me? that incident, too. Yeah, so like... white people was mad, child. Yeah, I'm not that shit was terrible. He was trying to take away his Nike deal. They like, were damn. trying to... I'm like, nah, Travis Scott, you need a W right now, bro. <laughs> we're actually coming up on a year of that. <laughs> take away his um, Nike deal. Yo, they were like... White people were pissed. Yo. Yeah, they were pissed. They're like suing, laughing, right? It was insane, but... Yeah, we're coming up on a year of Utopia being out, and that shit was not... Well, not it. Not at all. I was not a fan. But um, trying to think what else came out this year. Obviously, like we can talk about the the future of Metro projects, which it was that being announced was like a very exciting moment for me. I'm always excited for new future. I love future, and he Same. hadn't dropped a project since 2022. He, he didn't drop anything in 2023. He might have been on like features and stuff, but no project. So I was like, okay, cool, new future, and produced by Metro. They always do great stuff together. Really good album. Obviously, it was overshadowed by the obvious thing, but the music itself was really good. But even that didn't really have much replay value for me. Like I don't, nope. I, I don't go back to it anymore. Nope. And then them dropping, we still don't trust you. A couple weeks later, mm -hmm. I love that they got into more of the pop R and B type stuff. Drink and Dance is a great song. Out of My Hands is good. All to Myself good. I don't play much of that. But you don't play either. It, like I don't play much of that either. So it's like it. it's even weird to be like, yo. Can I actually call this good if I don't go back to it a lot? Yeah. Because I know a lot of people weigh replay value very heavily. Our I people. don't, but it, it is important. Like, if I, if I, honestly, never mind, for example, I listen to that all the fucking time. I'm like, this has to be one of my favorite albums just because I play it so often. Um, and so it's like, damn, like, if this don't have replay value for me, like, is it, is it as good as I thought it was when, when it first dropped? So. And I'm glad you brought that up because, like, sometimes I will feel forced to say something is good just because I'm like, damn, girl, you don't like nothing. Mm -hmm. Facts. But I don't. Mm -hmm. And replay value is important to me. And if I don't feel like playing that shit as many times as I've heard Not Like Us in just two months, <laughs> then it ain't really it. Yeah. 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 And it's like, I've I've always, I feel like, throughout my career or just my life as a music fan, I've always tried to see the bright side of things. I've always tried to be like, all right, let me try to find something good within this thing. Like, I don't completely hate it. It's not trash. There's something I enjoy. A lot of this shit is trash and there's nothing I enjoy. It's like, I remember the Schoolboy Q album dropped and niggas were praising the fuck out of that. Like, oh my! It was like God. album of the year. This is incredible. Restoring the feeling. Blah blah. All and that. And I listened to that shit. And it was trash. I I <laughs> I, I wouldn't say it, it was, was trash. Like, okay, not okay, but it wasn't. It wasn't what, what they, they were saying. saying. Yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. I, I got five songs in, and I was like, "This is what y'all was saying was the greatest shit ever, bro." And like, they be wilding, bro. I, I had to stop. Like, it, it was cool. It, it was, it was all cool. right, but it was cool. 
I don't know. Schoolboy has never really been, never moves me like that anyway. The way so niggas like, was waiting on that album too and hyping it too. Like yeah. Schoolboy is about to drop one of the craziest things. And like, he, he did have some really cool singles. He he did like a, a rollout, he which, did. which feels rare these days. Mm-hmm. Rolling out, out mm-hmm. music mm-hmm. feels rare. So I was like, okay, cool. Like he's he's building the anticipation in the right way. But the music that I heard just like didn't yeah. really do it for me. Didn't really do it for me, yeah. so. Yep. You know what else was a disappointment for me? Um, the fact that we still don't have Cardi's album yet. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the things I was yeah. gonna say for anticipation. Like, yeah. or, like, like, what's good? Like, she's way overdue. We, we were waiting like, since last year, and then now she's pregnant mm. again. Jesus Christ! And it's just like I, I think disappointed and anticipated. That will be mm-hmm. my pick for both because mm-hmm. I am excited to hear new Cardi, and you know she did have that feature run, but like. I, yeah, I want to hear. Something. I don't yeah. want to barb too much, but like the feature run was more beneficial to her mm-hmm. yeah. than it was for the artist, and it's just like Facts. it was cool, but Facts. like Cardi ain't washing no niggas on the track, being the only female on the feature. Mm-hmm. Cardi's not doing certain things, and like now because she said like I'm not doing any more features every time she announces a feature I do a deep negro spiritual sigh <laughs> like I don't want to hear that song with her and Rob 49 that's coming out bro. yeah I, I did see that email I was like <sighs> what is it called fuck me on the money or what uh, is I it, don't remember what it's, it's called it's gonna know. be some raunchy uh, shit yeah it's just gonna be like yeah it's just gonna cause be cause Rob 49 yeah. is not even I'm not big into Rob 49 like, yo he, he had that good all. verse on Utopia but otherwise man yeah. nah pack yeah. him up I'm son not, <laughs> I'm not really yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a I'm not a big Rob 49 guy yeah yeah pack him up so, yeah I don't know um, yeah, I don't know. Car, car, the, the Cardi thing. People and do like him though. That's weird. People, yeah, he's he, he's, he's he's definitely got a following. Pretty, yeah. Do women like him? I was about to say girls like. him Okay, that's okay. We can. They yeah. want to fuck. Okay, yeah. that's all. <laughs> that's you. all. And then he be doing that New Orleans dance when they do the little. <laughs> you know? Does he look like a fish to you, or you think he, he thinks oh attractive? My God, what? <laughs> he look like a cute fish. Let me look up Rob Four Nine. I don't There's think nothing I've seen wrong with him. that. No, Rob Four Nine. I understand why young girls like, will women like, like him. him. Like, yeah. yeah, women like him. Oh, that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard his music. I, I've never seen what he looked like. Mm-hmm. Or, the, or I have. I just didn't know that I that I knew what he looked like. Uh, uh, put me on that money, B. I, I can see some fish. <laughs> some talk, fish. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I can see some fish characteristics. I like that collab he got with Wayne. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. It's real New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. like all right, put on for y'all city type shit. Like I love that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, but um yeah and I'm, i mean we, we had a pretty extensive conversation about the cardi thing i'm just like it's it's to the point where people people just don't really care anymore like and i don't want to feel that way yeah i'm a new yorker i'm gonna support all the new york girlies even though they hate each other i'm gonna support them all like i'm on a payroll yeah we all know who's my favorite but i love all of them like mm-hmm. net remy had me going crazy oh that's a i'm ex- excited for that Ooh, remy remy drop them Nah, she dropped that song. Oh. She's like, they say I shot my friend over a band. Mm. And I was like, (laughs) bitch, you're crazy. I did see that, yeah. Yo, she's crazy. (laughs) Especially, like, you know, knowing that her and Papoose are having real issues. And it's like, girl, who you talking about? Wildin'. (laughs) Wildin'. Uh, How'd you feel about Gunna's um, one of one? Hyped up, overhyped, overrated, (sighs) child. Sounds like everything he dropped, child. Wow, you, so you, you, you like? Do you have any favorite songs? It sounds like every away? whatever is my last favorite Gunna song. I'm sure it sounds just like it. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll say this one didn't move me as much as like I feel like he peaked with um, Kush and Pete, Giffen and Curse. Um, well, no, I, I think he peaked before then with uh-huh. Wanna, and then with Drip Season Forever. I did really like Giffen and Curse, and I liked how introspective he was it was very it was very somber like he, he was really touching on the things that he kind of endured but it was like i right, we kind of want you to get back to your getting fly raps party raps talking your shit raps and he did a little bit more of that on one of one but he's lost so many connections with his best producers that the music just doesn't sound as good as it used to be like he, he caught one um he's got that song um on one tonight from from um one of one which i thought was good like there, there's a couple of joints on here that are pretty solid but for the most part like it's not like one long song joe yeah this album didn't didn't stick with me too too much um but he's he's got like a lot of support around him which i love to see for him like i love that offset is 
standing by him and working with him because Offset was kind of cast aside after the Migos breakup. Yeah. So like those two linking up is awesome. I mean, him him coming out of jail last year or whenever he came out of jail and yeah. actually like dropping hit music. Mm -hmm. I think that low key like just selling shows. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Facts. I feel like that just blew people away. Not even blew people away, but it's kind of surprising because a lot of people wanted to put the nail in the coffin. Yeah. yeah. And, and he I, came back and was like, actually, I got some hits. And yeah. I mean, look <laughs> look like, at a lot of the niggas who have been calling him a snitch. Like, facts. Lil Baby would love to fuck you mean right now. <laughs> oh my God. Lil Dirk would love a Rodeo oh drive God. right now. Like, and them niggas can't catch shit the last oh my Lil God. Baby caught one with Band for Band with Central C. No, but didn't. It's, it's, it, it's, 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 lying. The, the song has motion. You, I, I, I understand. I understand. You and don't we like know why him. it got motion. You, you think it's because of Central C? Yeah. I mean, granted, to, to me, that's like, that's Central C's formula, and it always works. Little le bebe don't add to that. <laughs> I mean, I, I agree with you. Central C is the best part of the song, but I do think Lil Baby le bebe does add some <laughs> some of the humor. He adds humor for the TikToks <laughs> so that the people could do the little, you know, <laughs> the little switcheroo. But yeah, it's like. Gunna's getting to the point where a lot of niggas recognize, like, damn, like, maybe, maybe we should start rocking with him again. And I think these producers are going to start doing it, too, because the niggas that they're working with, bro, like, if, if you look at the Billboard charts right now, it's literally just not like us at, at the top. Like, everything else is pop, country, whatever, what, like, hip-hop is, this shit is dry. It is dry right now. Yeah. Like, we, we are, we are starving. Like, you know, I love the, the momentum Glorilla has right now, like. <laughs> She she been cooking again. A lot of niggas try to write her off. I was about to say how to count her out. That's another you know person yeah facts. glow TJ TGIF mm -hmm. wanna be like TGIF she she's smoking crazy. everything that she's on like yeah. it's it's amazing to see TGIF so TGIF is dangerous here outside yeah, yeah. with women <laughs> it gets dangerous yeah. very dangerous very yeah. dangerous you better start you better. Yeah. Even if you got a nigga. Facts. Hide your kids, hide your wife. It's gonna get crazy, <laughs> yeah. boy. Sim, they be yeah, oh God, nigga. <laughs> that, that, they start pushing <laughs> niggas out there. I'm like, damn, what the fuck? Yeah. They moshing like us. Now that was that's exciting to see yeah, that's just hard. and her potential that's just for sure. Hard. Yeah. I'm trying to think of things that I do like because we can talk about <laughs> the thing we don't like all, <laughs> all day. day. Like yeah. I was about to say if TJF was on Glow's album that she just dro like she dropped. Yeah, that. she just dropped a project. Yeah, yeah. If, but like TJF is like a separate single mm -hmm. from. If it was on there, I'd be like, that's probably one of the best projects because she has, you know, yeah. she got she got some hits on there. So yeah, no, um, our, oh, me. Lucky Day. We didn't get to talk about that. I actually really like Lucky Day a album. lot. It's really good. Algorithm mm -hmm. is really good. really good. I was like mm -hmm. pleasantly shocked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, he did good. He taps into a lot of like alternate type R and B type yeah, stuff. Rock. Um, yeah, which which is cool. Like it's it's yeah. refreshing. Yeah. It's very refreshing. Like he's uh, me and Nick, shout out to Nick. Um, we've we've been talking about Lucky for years because we feel like of this new class of male R and B guys, Lucky is the most talented one, but he's not a star because people don't care about him. People don't know shit about him aside they know from he take care of them kids. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like fucking uh like Neo told the story about Lucky um, like Lucky was staying at his crib, and Neil's like, "Whatever you do, don't go in this room." And Lucky had had a joint in the room, um, so like we people know he's talented, but people don't really give a fuck about him. And I'm like, it sucks because like he he should be for all intents and purposes a male R and B star, but he hasn't had that hit record for people to know, like yeah. you know, like that radio single. You need a top ten. Yeah. Banger, yeah, like, that's on radio yeah. as like, well. And yeah. like he tried yeah. it on Candy Drip, he flipped um, Music Soul Child's Half Crazy. I'm not gonna lie, on first listen, you know that that gif with Jay Z when he's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was me like trying to catch the beat because I'm uh -huh. like, all right, I know the sample, but it's just yeah. weird. Mm -hmm. And then it, it grew on me. Yeah, but... it's just a really good song. It's a really good song, but like almost it's not a, kind of a cheat code. But it didn't it, it it didn't hit that crazy. And then he um he flipped um Usher. Uh, you don't have to call on guests, and that one, I loved it, but that one didn't really catch on either. So it's just like uh, the the whole male R and B thing is just this whole thing. Like Chris Brown said it already. What he said? It's the era of ugly R and B niggas. <laughs> I have, I have, I have one one shout out that might be a little different, but it okay. really is one of the best projects of the year. A lot of people talk about it. You can see it. And I think the branding for it was amazing. Mm -hmm. Um. Brat by oh, Charlie, Charlie X. 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 Yeah, that shit is. I still haven't listened fully, but I, I was at a bar and um, I think 360 came on, mm -hmm. and I was like, Yeah, 
See, exactly. I was like, hold on. My nigga. <laughs> pulled out Shazam real quick. I was like, oh, this is the shit my nigga's been going crazy over. All right, I need <laughs> no, to play this. Exactly. That's, that's why a I was great like, record. That's a great record. That's it's a, a good pop record, record bro. And I, so, that's why I heard it. I was like, I did the yeah. same thing. I was like, okay. And my girlfriend was like, yeah, you got to sit down and listen to this shit. Yeah, I'm like, like, okay. like, literally, like, all, all, all my homeboys been talking it up. That's so that's how I know it's a big deal. Like, all right. When, when my niggas talking I'm going to so tap in. I was like, all right, let me tap in. It's some pop shit. But it's not just hip hop, though, that's underwhelming. It's like all the genres as a whole. I think. Social media has done this like globalization mm-hmm. of cultures that everyone is trying to copy each other. Like, I'm not here for Latin trap personally. <laughs> like, I don't like the Latino artists rapping over like hip hop sounding beats. I hate that. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's so Just... strange. And then New Yorker is trying to sound like Atlanta. It's like, everybody's trying to sound like each other, even the dance hall artists. Like, mm-hmm. every Thing is on mm. every genre that I love, I'm literally bored. Mm. You just made a good point yeah. with with the with the idea of like, especially with the internet, <laughs> it's 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 uh, turned every rock. Yeah. So everybody yeah. knows everything. Everybody's trying to Everything's do everything. Accessible. I never every- knew what Baltimore niggas sounded like until social media, bro. Oh God, <laughs> I didn't know that. They Facts. Like it's that. just like so much. Yeah. It's like it's like the melting pot has became too much to the point where everything is just it's in my hand. same shit every yeah. time like okay. and it's like it's cool to see like when Don gets on a cash beat for example mm-hmm. that's cool that mm-hmm. was cool Don, Don mm-hmm. smoked that but mm-hmm. then it's and like Charlie. I think when everyone starts to try to do it it's like I right. it just gets much. weird bro it just Not gets it just gets it gets it's such a copycat league and, and it's, it's like, always been. Oh, facts. Yeah. It's always but been. It's but at a much higher rate now, and, and more internet. frequent. And and you could tell. We talked about this. You could tell when a nigga is doing something that is out of their element, but they're doing it because it's the hot thing. And it's like you're not going to be able to sustain this. Like it's niggas who really do this type of sound, right? Mm-hmm. And you're eventually going to run out of gas, and mm-hmm. then we're going to be like, "Well, mm-hmm. what happened, bro? Like you was." Facts. So, and if you're not in that wave, you would have to get like someone who's in the wave to like you would have to be a guest feature. You can't like mm-hmm. hop on the wave. It's mm-hmm. it's strange. But everyone, yeah, like the the wave right. Everyone is trying to do what other people are doing, but do it better. And and it ain't working. Yeah, it's it's, it's not for everyone. Everybody get back. You know, we need to do the Motown shit. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you mentioned too that it's not just rap because a lot of people think it's just rap it's yeah. Not, yeah no it's it's R&B like it's everything it's yeah. pop it's everything like. yeah. I listen to old salsa that I used to run from like when I heard that shit I knew my mom was cleaning and wanted to teach me how to dance salsa so I would like pretend I'm sleeping longer <laughs> like it's a now re- I play yeah. that shit and it's yeah. like yo they don't make shit like this no more they for real not. they do not for real bro no. <laughs> that's why people be mad at Taylor Swift like oh she just like you know she got her fans but it's just her and it's just like she dominates this, sh- like you know, it's just different genres that are dealing with the same. Also, these shit. people's deals and stuff, like you mentioned, Twenty One Savage. Mm-hmm. I don't think he has a desire to like really, you know, grow as an artist because according to his club Shay Shay interview, his deal is set up well. Like he's mm-hmm. one of the few yeah, people who up. are eating from streaming. Yeah. So like, hip hop has been exploited beyond repair. Yeah. As long as niggas is making a bag, they straight. No, no, I think that's the biggest thing is it doesn't feel like a lot of these people Give a want fuck. to be stars. They don't. Like, you, you used to be able to really feel that hunger within people. You could see it. Mm-hmm. You, it was just palpable. It was it was undeniable. Mm-hmm. And now it feels like a lot of artists are looking at music like like just a lick. A come up. Yeah, it's, like, it's, a, yeah, it's like, a super lick. Fast. It is. I, I, think it's, I, I, I went think it's viral easy. for this thing. I've got a big social mm-hmm. media following. Let me drop a song. Mm-hmm. Real talk. Like I'm, I'm popping enough to where I know this producer. L- l- let me jump on a beat from them. I'm a TikTok comedian. Let mm-hmm. me start making music. Yeah. It's, it's annoying. Yeah, <laughs> and um, yeah, I think I hate, it's just I it's tainted that the space. Too. I don't know why everybody like, tried why to do everything. Why don't you act first? <laughs> yeah, like why <laughs> you try to do everything? If like, you making skits, why wouldn't the first thing you try to do is act? Mm-hmm. Why would it be dropping music? Oh. <laughs> It'd be like the weirdest thing. He'd be like, yo, he got... It'd be, I was watching some podcaster and he just started rap. I'm like, bro, what in the hell? I thought you was... Uh, I don't know. Don't bro. worry, I'm going to drop a track. I'm everybody everybody just, in this room. Everybody just be... <laughs> everybody just wants to make music as it's like it's like some yeah. like easy, fun lick. Like you, It's like, not. It's not, You need bro. a level of intellect to like make a and skill. good rap. And skill. Skill. Facts. Like the, the, the barrier for entry has just been severely reduced you know what people like, used to ask me when i first got into music they was like oh why don't you make music i said bro i respect it and love it too mm-hmm. much <laughs> yeah. like i don't I, I wouldn't be good bro mm-hmm. 
So I'm gonna go here and do some other stuff, but I want to be a part of it. But I respect it, and yeah, you no, know, yeah, my skill level is not that high to be rapping. Like, yeah. sorry. Yeah, I, I, I used to rap with my cousin, and like, and like he he was actually nice. Mm-hmm. He's actually really talented. I knew I wasn't. Yeah, it's like one of those things. Like, yeah, I know when it's time to hang it up. I was like, like, you know, I could probably try and get better, but I think I need to recognize now this is not meant for me. Like, I'm 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 meant to be an executive or a journalist mm-hmm. or whatever. Or that nigga, else. that yes. nigga might go far, so I'll I'll, I'll work with him. I'll write I'll write him up. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll, <laughs> he I'll got push a good him. Shot but, but like, as far as myself, <laughs> not nah, it's not for me. And I just think a lot of these niggas don't have that come to Jesus moment because it's so easy to pop off. Like you just, you just do some crazy shit on TikTok. So like, oh shit. Like I have a following. Well, what do I do with this following now? Start Make music. Start yeah. rapping. <laughs> Start yeah. rapping. <laughs> yeah. What? Um, it's, it's, it's tough times. And like, I don't, I, I, I didn't want, I didn't want this to be a bashing sh- session, but I also don't want us, like, I want us to be honest. And I think a lot of us feel like, I was talking to, talking about it in a group chat with my boys the other day, and I was just like, "I've been bored this year. Bored. I've, I've 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 been really bored this year, and even the very fun thing became exhausting over time because that 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 was just like it was like you have a really good pizza one day, and then you get that pizza every day for the next like two months. Eventually, that shit not gonna taste as good anymore. You're gonna get tired of that shit, mm-hmm. and that's how it felt with that thing." And then again, you set that thing aside, and it's like, what else? I did really like Tyler's album. I'll say that. To, to oh, Tyler, yes. Tyler's album was oh, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That was really that's refreshing. Facts, like facts. songwriting, vibes. good good hooks, really polished. I, I think there's a level up that she can have. Like a lot of the songs did, kind of feel a little similar, but really good. Though. I love like, Truth or Dare. Don't Truth or Dare is fire. Yeah, I love Jump. That. I knew that was gonna be the next single. Jump is hard. Uh, number one with Thames was hard. Mm. Um. Actually, I haven't listened to Thames' album yet, but I've I've heard good things about it. But I don't know. So some like there's one of those albums I just didn't feel like in a rush to listen. That's it. I don't feel in a rush to listen to a lot of this. I don't shit. Have a rush you know, to anything. Facts. Sad eyes. Like, like bro, <laughs> they be like, "Hey, are my songs out. Listen to it now." They He's just like, do a social uh, media post and be like, "Go ahead, listen to it." And I'm like, "No, yeah, no, make me." Nothing Perfect. feels make me. Nothing feels must listen. Nothing feels like an event. Like Future's the only album was like Future's album because him, him and Metro the rollout was impeccable. Mm-hmm. Like that, it felt like an event. And so mm-hmm. I was like, all right, like let me tap in. But I be. I've been. I just got to Capella Gray's album, and no respect to Capella. I, I like Capella, and the album, from what I heard, was actually pretty good. A lot of people was, like that. A lot of yeah, really good shows. Yeah, it's from New there. York. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people. Yeah, like I, I love his respect for you know like R and B, like mm-hmm. fucking. He like, cares about artistry. Yeah, he does. yeah, he does. He's it's uh, obvious. A really good writer. Like the production on it is very. He might like, say something crazy, but he he cares about this shit. He he does. He does, he do be saying crazy he's shit. He's passionate. <laughs> he's Jamaican. He do be saying crazy shit. He's passionate. <laughs> he's passionate in Jamaican. Yeah. Right. They so. passionate and just unhinged. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but he's he on the Bronx. Yeah, he makes good music, so like, yeah, it's mm-hmm. like, hey, yeah, do and, what you got to do. And it was like after you know so many years since Gallus, and he'd been talking up his debut album for years, and I, you know, me and my boys who fucked with him when he first like you know popped, it was like, bro, well, where, like, where's this music at, bro? Yeah, like, yeah. we've been waiting. Where's this music at? Yeah, he should have dropped. Well, a lot the business soon, side, he said, fucked them over. Yeah, you yeah, know, all them too. layoffs and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Facts. I, I, it took a a while for me to warm up to Capella. Mm. Mm. Um, cause I was just such a Tory Lanez fan, mm. and I was just like, "What do I need Capella yeah. for?" You think it was like the same sounding shit? Like it absolutely, was just like, yeah. You was just like, but <laughs> now Tory locked up. It's yeah. like, all right, great, <laughs> come in, nigga. Capella, you up? <laughs> <laughs> but um, nah, I really like that he cares about you know the artistry a lot. Mm-hmm. But you know who is doing a good job at creating a moment? My sis JT. Mm. She's doing her advance. Um, documentary screenings in mm. New York City and Miami today. She did the whole club, you know, circuit mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. created a big buzz. Yeah. Um, the singles created a big buzz. Even while she was doing the club appearances, she did like this rap cam thing. Like it, like she's doing a good job at you know guerrilla marketing her upcoming solo effort, and I'm here for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think what else from this year. Like, yeah, like, what do me. I like? I, we know we hate everything. We bored. <laughs> but no, now we did a good job. I think uh, we just Nikki, did a good job. Tyla. We just did a good job. Yeah. Nikki, Tyla, you named off all types of shit. Bryson, Party Next Door. Uh-huh. I really like Party Next Door. Yeah, Party, he did that's, a good that's job. That's my favorite project this year. Um, oh, yeah, a lot of people Kei do Trinata. A lot of people do like Kei parties. Kei Trinata's album's good. Yes. Um, he even dropped visuals for it. I was like, you don't yeah. even got to do this. Yeah. I appreciate you. Yeah. 
Um, no, no lie. I went to Everyday People yesterday, and I heard that Truth or Dare out outside for the first time. I was like, oh, yeah. Changes I get things. it. Yeah. I get it. Like, Emotion. this is like... Life felt like it, it felt like worth yeah. life was worth living. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's on the rooftop, like yeah. I was like, damn, I looked up in the sky like, yeah. Look Truth at that beautiful skyline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, um, for the she most part, like this year's kind of been boring and there have been disappointments. I'm a, I'm a big Kalani guy, the Kalani album let me down. I knew it wasn't gonna let me down. <laughs> so, I forgot she even dropped. My bad. I knew that we, was gonna we talked about it a few weeks ago. I forgot she even Niggas dropped. Niggas forgot it. her. I knew that shit was gonna happen. Yeah. She did the Free Palestine shit. I'm like, girl. Oh, yeah. they, they also, just... sorry, I don't want to mis- misidentify her. They. Yeah, Kalani uses they, them pronouns. And I ain't even gonna lie. You know what? No. Never mind. Uh-oh. Never mind. She be turning me off though. That's all I'm gonna say. She makes me not give a fuck about her. There, it's too much, too many antics. I have seen a lot of people saying that. Too many antics. I don't care what's going on, girl. I have I have seen a lot of people say that, and upon kind of looking at it holistically, removing my fan, I'm like, I can understand why someone would feel that way. It's always something. I can I can understand why someone. I kind of just now that you say that, I kind of just realized it too. It is something always going on with Kalani. Yeah, it's like antics, antic wise. Antics. It's not like music wise, like antic wise. Like it's always straight some antics. antics. All her little clappers moving, they be moving, <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss anything. Right. Party, Bryson, Future Metro. Tyler, I even Kate Trinata. Yeah, bro. Cowboy, Cowboy Carter. I like that. Cowboy Carter had some really good records on it. I yeah. like that. Shout out to really Beyonce for having that. me listen to country music. Sweet, sweet honey bucking. That shit hard. Mm-hmm. The shit with Miley Cyrus is fire. Yes. <laughs> uh, shout out to Shabuzi. Shabuzi had some great records on there. Yep, and he's like milking that moment as he's, he he's should. He's doing his thing right now. It, it was dope seeing him bring out Jay Quan. I was like, yo, this is culture. This yes, is culture. that was culture. This is culture. <laughs> this, is, this is what we need. This is what we fucking need. No, for real. I've seen somebody tweet like something like, they gotta be making sure Jay Quan's getting paid off. The-. Like, bro, what do y'all think? What do y'all think people be like? Like, do y'all think this is just like niggas just making music in their bedroom and somehow Shabuzi just made it to the BET? Like, bro, that shit is handled. Whoa, like, come back on. in those days, we don't know what Jay Quan deal was giving no, low no, key. Fact. We don't know who's getting yeah, paid over what, that shit. We don't know key. what, yeah, you don't know who that but could be going eating. to. But yeah. And I don't Hopefully. like that the fans be trying to be execs now. Like, oh, chill bro. out, bro. Killing Enjoy me, the bro. music, bro. Oh, Leave that shit bro. to us. Little I was... Man. Someone, <laughs> someone responded, though, and said, well, did you see um, he brought them out and they performed it at the BET Awards? They're like, oh, he did for real? Let me see. I'm like, bro. And then, then they try me. They be trying not to believe you and stuff. Like, it's just like, bro, can y'all just... Enjoy the, the music and be enjoy the music. Just, just vibe. Be, just be consumed. Like just we, consume. Be entertained. The great but also annoying thing about social media is it gives us access to, you know, like you, you'll just be scrolling through your timeline and you'll see a, a music exec tweet an opinion, or you'll see someone important say something. And so these people seeing these people's thoughts empowers them to think that they think the same <laughs> way or they know things because these niggas say it. Mm-hmm. It's like, bro, it's okay to just be a fan. Yeah. Like I, I even had to teach myself this too. Like. I, years ago, I would get too deep into the weeds of things and try mm-hmm. to just, you know, mm-hmm. just like act like I'm the manager or, or I'm like, hold on, <laughs> hold on. I got to step back. I'm like, no, let me just enjoy this for what it is. Dislike it for what it is. But I don't got to get into the who, what's the splits on this? Like, what's the, what's right. the splits? <laughs> who, <laughs> like, why do you who even mix care? And this? Like, rip. Yeah, yeah, like, like, why do you even fuck? care, bro? Like, going down, scrolling to the bottom, looking all the, like, yeah, well, he got, they're like, bro. Yeah. This, this nigga put this out because of his deal. Or, mm-hmm. like, he got a satisfied. Oh, he's trying to, yeah, facts. Like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, he's like, trying to drop. Do you like the song or not? <laughs> it's <laughs> relevant sometimes, though. Like, when Future did it, it to do. get out of his deal, it's like, okay, it I understand do. why a consumer would talk about it Like, Frank Ocean, when he did it. Yeah, it's certain moments, but it, it's very, but niggas, very rare. But niggas apply that armchair executive thinking to everything now. And since when we cared about charts, yeah. I never cared about charts. That's, that's I still the other don't. Thing. That's the other thing. It's like seeing fans that bragging fuck, that about fuck the game tour up. sales. Like chart data. Chart numbers. data is one of the craziest accounts ever created. Yeah, bro. For like, real. like these. And niggas, I don't believe it. Is it credible? I think it's behind that shit. Well, just chart data gets their info directly from the Billboard charts. So okay. Like, yeah, yeah, it's okay. yeah. I just yeah. don't. I don't know who runs it. I don't know where it came from. But I know. Show yourself. I know fans <laughs> and the way people 
are you under every post on there? Yeah, it's like, nuts, fans bro. really be like we- weaponizing that shit, and I'm just like, mm-hmm. I-, I didn't really care until I got older. Like, I remember when like Views was the number one album for like ten weeks. I was like talking about shit, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I was like, okay, whatever. Like, like, what does this actually do for me? Like, nothing. I'm just, I'm, I'm a Drake fan who likes to see him succeed, and numbers were never an issue for him. Like, it don't matter who releases with him, he's getting a number one. So it's like. Whatever. What happened? Did they start releasing? The, I'm trying to think. What? what why did social. people? Yeah, it's just, it's think, yeah. Think it's just and, social media. I think it's just social media. And once an artist started campaigning, once we, to yeah, get number bro. ones, like yeah. Drake, Drake was trying to get Hotline Blending on number one in 2015. He he was like he was fighting after for that he shit. stole it. <laughs> I mean, bro, that's, I, just, I started my writing career that year, and I remember following that story, son. Mm. Justice for Drum, but I love Drake. Mm, drum is a drum is a special case, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I, I really feel like around that time, like like something about those years, something 20, happened, 2015, bro. 2016, just the world shifted. But but like beyond Some, Trump, it was like obviously we happened. had that legendary summer. But I just feel like just everything changed. Everything, every fucking thing changed in that niggas time started period. caring about apple the music numbers. launched yes bro like just so many things oh, happened you know, you know what else happened spotify happened you can start seeing spotify niggas, blew up you can start yeah. seeing niggas plays and numbers yeah. that's when oh my god when that i happened, think that was the year when uh cr- cr- credit cards started letting you tap to pay too mm-hmm. I, I think i think that happened that year shout too out, shout out to them. which I, I i remember when i got a new credit card i was like what's this little like silver thing here and then i, I went to go cop something and I saw a tap to pay. I was like, "What's that?" Like, nigga, I'm I'm used to swiping. Like, I don't right? what or inserting. I what's it? It was like, "No, you could tap." I was like, "Oh my like, god!" You, like literally, like tap, mm-hmm. tap my car. I was like, "Oh shit!" It's wow, in the future. Fire. And then you get Apple Wallet, and then you start tapping your phone. It's like, "Oh shit!" It's kind of lose your damn card. But yeah, no cap. I'm just like, yo, I, <laughs> well, that just, happened to me. I lost my car for like a month, but I was like, "Good." <laughs> like, I, I take Apple Pay. Facts. I was Gucci. Like. But yeah, I just feel like so much change for the better and the worse in that time period and then you get trump's election i think the pandemic was also just very poisonous to discourse and how music is received and how people assess numbers and but it was definitely before that you're right yeah Yeah. i would never forget i like used to do an end of the year wrap up like Mm -hmm. called top five and then i would have kojo um funny julius and like a Mm -hmm. former friend we would like wrap up like all our favorite things of the year and then my ex-friend she said eminem was her top album and i was like bitch i never even heard you talk about that shit <laughs> why you picked that one mm-hmm. she said because it was number one and i was like mm, okay. oh you just prepared for this conversation right before you came here mm. <laughs> okay because <laughs> girl i never heard you talk about that album yeah yeah i don't know it's a it's an interesting time and it's like you know you, you never want to be that because you can say the state of music isn't good right now, but you'd be really just be talking about the mainstream because there's a lot of underground artists who I fuck with, a lot of indie artists who are coming up that are dope, but they just don't have that spotlight. So you kind of have to judge it off of what is what's the, put in our faces the mm-hmm. most. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it is not good. Mm-hmm. And you, you just got to be mm-hmm. honest about mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. So, can we also acknowledge that a lot of music executives are just not fans or care about the music mm-hmm. and they just want clout? Yeah. Yeah, they they just want to they just want to make a bag off of niggas who are trying to make a bag themselves, but and not really sustain a career or have the skills to build longevity for themselves. Like, like there's a lot of artists that my friends like would manage, or you know, their project managers, digital marketers, whatever their position is, mm-hmm. and I'll be like, "Do you really believe in this artist, or mm-hmm. they're just paying your bills?" Because mm-hmm. I don't believe you believe in them, and if you do, I'm judging you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's uh. It's a wild time. It's a really wild time. And um yeah, I just uh I'm concerned. I'm I'm hoping It's okay, bro. That, that side was kinda crazy, bro. Nah, because niggas, for real, bro. We no, because again We ain't had no good music they, that like, make you want to sit up in your room and nah, just put facts. Your I understand. I feel you. Well, you I gotta understand, you. man. I've, I feel you for years I I've I've you. been the guy who has always been able to find something good or like have a positive outlook even if i was deluding myself into seeing it ain't shit positive right now bro like i got the few albums i listed but for the most part i'm i, I really just i was i obviously still listen to a lot of drake so I'm, i've been going back through his discography um 
I've been playing some other shit, which I'm gonna talk about on Patreon because it's a little problematic. But, um, <laughs> but I, I've been, I just been, I've been playing shit. Most of it is not from this year. Yeah, um, yeah. like it's just, it's just. Uh, I listen to WBLS in my car. You listen to the radio? That's crazy. Yeah, because I don't want to all like I'm tired of listening to all the same shit. And yeah. when I'm driving, I don't want to think about it because yeah. I haven't made a playlist in forever. Mm-hmm. So now I'm listening to WBLS and they don't repeat songs between nine to five. Yeah. That's and me fire. and Lenny Green, we locked in. Vibing, vibing. That's yeah. fire. Yeah, like I, I listen to podcasts more than anything. Like I mm. a couple couple months ago I made a playlist of like I think it was like my pre summer playlist. And on there is like Million Dollar Baby. Um, couple Tyler songs, couple Bryson songs, couple party songs. Um, I added as the beef happened. I added songs from the beef into that shit. I don't even go back to that anymore because I kind of got I got tired of listening to those same Damn. songs over and over. So I'm just like, and I plan to continue it throughout the year. And I was like, fuck this. I don't want to hear these anymore. I listen to these so much. I don't want to hear them anymore. So, agree. Yeah, man. That, like this is me really coming to terms with the fact that like I can't be this this delusional optimist anymore i gotta be realistic and i love realistically, that for you armand the, the, the shit not hitting <laughs> we're in trouble we mayday mayday <laughs> yeah i have another friend i actually told him on twitter mm-hmm. i don't know if you've seen it but i was like my nigga you are you are tainting your own judgment by gassing up a bunch of whack shit. It's mm-hmm. to the point that if you say something is good, I don't listen to it anymore because mm-hmm. I don't know if you're mm-hmm. like trolling mm-hmm. or it's your friend. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh, <laughs> it's dark times. That ass. Like... It's really dark times. So all of that to say, in, in summation, would I consider this a good year for music so far? No. Um, who's due to drop a project? I don't care because they'll probably disappoint me. They'll probably disappoint me. Like Cardi's do. Lotto's due. Um, um, who else is due? Who else is due? Who would I like to hear from that hasn't dropped on the mail side? I don't think there's anyone on the mail side that I'm like really pressed to hear from. Um, give me on being ghost, but he's not the mm, mm, give me on whatever. Um, Miguel, I'd like a Miguel album. I won't be mad I at Miguel. that. I would love a Miguel album. Miguel, a lot of people God. ask for a, a joint collab with him and Cole. No, I don't need that. He said no. He that. that in two thousand nine. Nah, nah. Oh like yeah, yeah. If, if, if it was like a twenty ten <laughs> thing, that, that would have been that would have shook the world. I forgot to say, Bossman Delo's tape. Bossman Delo's doing very well. His tape was very good. Yeah, he's, he's the one bright that. spot. And that shit is that shit is refreshing because it's like a it's just like the way he raps. It's like. <laughs> That nigga's the best caption rapper right now. Yeah. It's like crazy, bro. Like, it I'm, works for him. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure you saw that viral tweet where the nigga was like, "Boss Man D-Lo is bringing back the traditional power forward. Yes, that's, but like it was like the perfect. That's the perfect tweet. Oh, God, every, everybody knew what he was talking about, bro. Because like he doesn't. Boss Man D-Lo doesn't. Like he's just himself. He doesn't have to like have this deep vocabulary. He doesn't have to switch his flow. He does this one thing. And his post move works on everyone. Like yeah. he, he gets Gangsta. in the lane, he Gangsta. backs you down, Gangsta. he lays it up, or he shoots a fadeaway, mm-hmm. or he dunks, mm-hmm. and it works. Mm-hmm. A lot of his songs sound the same, but these shits is hitting, and I, I I know it's gonna run out eventually. Mm-hmm. But for right now, this nigga is, is Tim Duncan of his class. Like he's oh God, he's going crazy. He's cooking. Yeah. He, he, the one liners. Yo, he's great. Yeah. He's great. He's funny. He's yeah. he's he he be flexing. Like I, I feel I like, like it's good sports music. It's good car music. It's yeah. just good. Boosts you up. It's just refreshing to hear, like, like a nigga who sounds like he's excited to be making the music he's making. Also, right? Like, thank God, you actually sound like you want to do this. Yeah, it believes, he, it, and that it, feels it, rare. It, yeah, like everything he raps, you believe he's like he doing it, and he believe like you believe he's believing it. Yeah. Well, you believe yeah. he's a pot scraper, <laughs> <laughs> Mister Pot Scraper, yes, Mister. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, he's facts. he's great. I'm, I'm, so thank you for saying that because yeah. um, I just had yes. to remember. Like I just he, had to remember. He was someone who I wanted to bring up, but um, <sighs> yeah, man. Um, you know, all that to say, uh, over halfway through the year, it's not mm-hmm. it. Thank you, it's Beyonce. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Kendrick and Trey. Yeah, for exciting us this year. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. But that's another episode <laughs> of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. And so, um, of course, make sure that you like, share, all that good stuff. Tap into the Patreon, patreon.com backslash Stay Busy Pod. Miss 2B, it's great to have you back Happy in the building. Back. Always a pleasure. Will, yeah. always great to have you as yeah, well. Yeah. And so for the team, for the gang, we want you to stay safe, stay, stay humble, stay busy, stay busy radio. <laughs>